Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Mike Stewart pregame show presented to you by the U.S. Army, America's team. Visit them at GoArmy.com. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in to your coverage of Moore Park College football here on the Moore Park Raider live stream. My name is Ryan Ketchum, play-by-play -play commentator, joined alongside Nick Federico, who's the color commentator analyst. We also have Cole Egley, our cameraman, who was able to make the travel with us. We are actually here at College of the Canyons, home of the Cougars. For the home game for the Cougars, they're going to be playing host to the Moore Park Raiders. The College of the Canyon Cougars, COC, is coming in with a 4-2 overall record, just coming off of a loss against Ventura, 45-30. to And the Moore Park Raiders coming in this game with a 1-5 overall record. Unfortunately, they have lost the past five games, but there's always a time to be able to come back, always a time to make the season go better than it has been. And this can be the game. They did come off of a loss, 34-10, to against Bakersfield College, at Bakersfield College, last week. But they were able to score 10 points. They were able to get the offense going a little bit. Riley Garrett was able to nail a 45-yard field goal kick, the longest of his career, he was actually telling us. So he is definitely poised to be able to have a great game today. Also, the offense scoring a touchdown, it was nice to see them get in double figures. So, Nick, coming into this game, what are you looking to see out of the offense of the Moore Park Raiders? Well, I'm looking to see a lot more explosive plays happening. As you've talked about, they are, on, unfortunately, on a five-game losing streak. But like you said, there's always a perfect time to pick it up, and that could happen tonight. I think there we should see a lot more throwing the ball, keep keep a nice balance with the running game as well, but I want to see a lot more passes from Tanner Darling tonight. One of the things that we have seen this whole entire season has kind of been, uh, it, it's been something that, a uh, theme of the season that you can say, it's been happening every single game where the defense is stacking the box against us. They know it's going to go to Eddie Unbata, number six, is going to go to Mark Martin, number five, Anthony McLean, number 28. Anybody in the backfield is going to go to number 25, Ray Thomas, and they know that we're going to run the football. So if Tanner Darling can make sure he's able to get it to our receivers, able to find them in open space, especially like Vincent Corso, Vinny Corso, number 20. We got Cameron Prentice-Brown, number 81, just to name a few of our star wide receivers. If we're able to get that going, then that means that the defense, they're going to have to step up. I mean, step back. They're going to have to make sure they don't have as many people in the box, maybe going a nickel package, a dime package, to make sure that the wide receivers are accounted for. So hopefully we are able to get it going. But against this tough defense, I mean, this is a big-time defense. They have a <laughs> they have a big boy down low. I mean, this defensive tackle, he is crazy. Dorian Gerald, he's listed on the defensive line. Kind of looks like a defensive end type at a 6'3", 250 pounds. He was on the team last year. But the reason why we're mentioning – I mean, he is basically the leader of the defense. He controls that running game. He so far on the season has a, 11 tackles for loss and six sacks. How much of that can uh, – what can that do to an offense, of course, that's mainly run-based like the Moore Park Raiders? What can that big-time guy do to a team like this? Well, it can destroy the entire – Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Mike Stewart pregame show presented to you by the U.S. Army, America's team. Visit them at GoArmy.com. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in to your coverage of Moore Park College football here on the Moore Park Raider live stream. My name is Ryan Ketchum, play-by-play -play commentator, joined alongside Nick Federico, who's the color commentator analyst. We also have Cole Egley, our cameraman, who was able to make the travel with us. We are actually here at College of the Canyons, home of the Cougars. For the home game for the Cougars, they're going to be playing host to the Moore Park Raiders. The College of the Canyon Cougars, COC, is coming in with a 4-2 overall record, just coming off of a loss against Ventura, 45-30. to And the Moore Park Raiders coming in this game with a 1-5 overall record. Unfortunately, they have lost the past five games, but there's always a time to be able to come back, always a time to make the season go better than it has been. And this can be the game. They did come off of a loss, 34-10, to against Bakersfield College, at Bakersfield College, last week. But they were able to score 10 points. They were able to get the offense. Offense going a little bit. Riley Garrett was able to nail a 45-yard field goal kick, the longest of his career, he was actually telling us. So he is definitely poised to be able to have a great game today. Also, the offense scoring a touchdown, it was nice to see them get in double figures. So, Nick, coming into this game, what are you looking to see out of the offense of the Moore Park Raiders? Well, I'm looking to see a lot more explosive plays happening. As you've talked about, they are, on, unfortunately, on a... Now we're back with the National Anthem, but as you were mentioning about uh, that defensive line coming in with Dorian Gerald, how can that uh, affect a team like Moore Park with that big-time run offense? Oh, well, it can destroy an entire offense. I mean, if you can't, if you can't stop the DN like a monster like Dorian Gerald, it's going to destroy your entire offensive line, 
not only are you going to have to start running the ball more, but you're not going to have enough time to, if you want to pass it, you're not going to have enough time to get rid of the ball. It can disrupt an entire offense, a game plan, and it can root. And it's the difference between wins and losses, and that's why this team, number nine in California, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's reasons like this guy right here. I mean, Dorian Gerald, like you said, six sacks on the season. I mean, this defense is very productive, as along with their offense, too. I mean, they – they can get it done on both sides of the ball. They put up 35 points a game, but actually some things that the defense needs to work on for the Cougars is they do give up 430 yards a game, so maybe more Park can do something about that and add on to that. Yes, hopefully they can add on to it, but thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in to the Coach Mike Stewart pregame show presented by U.S. Army America's team. Visit them at goarmy.com today. And now it's game time. Here's the opening kickoff. The Moore Park Raiders are going to be receiving it at their own 13-yard line. We got Vincent Corso, number 20, as I'm blocking in front of him. A spin move just past the 35, and he gets pushed forward to the 38-yard line. Nice wedge right there, and short kick as well. So set up the Raiders with good field position right there. Vinny Corso feeling his players right there, opening, waiting for that wedge to open up, and nice run back for about 25 yards. It's great to see Vinny Corso out there. I know I was mentioning throughout the whole entire game against Bakersfield, we never got to see Vinny get loose in that game. I mean, he had, I think it was only one kickoff return that I was actually able to return. All the other times, it was either they were kicking into another player or they were on a punt return. They would kick it so high that the defense would already be right there. Right, right. And they do that sometimes to to show respect because they're they fear for players like Vinny to get open. Yes, they do fear for him. On a first down and 10, is going to be a pass out to the flat, and he's going to trip up on his own feet. That was Eddie Inbata, number six. It's going to be a loss of three on the play. And sometimes you'll see that, Ryan, some, you know, first play jitters, but, you know, eventually they're, they're going to set it down and realize that it's just another game there. You see him trip up over, over his own feet. Sometimes they say you're hearing footsteps, but mm -hmm. he'll be all right next play. Definitely he should be all right. Edgen Battle, one of the best players out here for the Moore Park Raiders, listed as a tight end, usually used as uh, a fullback type position. So hopefully it'll be better on the next play. It's going to be a handoff on a second down and 13. It actually goes right there. He's cutting back to the far sideline, gets past the 40-yard line, breaking some tackles, able to get a nice gain on the play. Desmond Davis, number two on the run. Nice job there by Davis, too, watching that cutback lane open up. A lot of times when you're pulling to the right, everyone's going to shift with it. Once you see that cutback lane, he hits it, breaks a tackle, and he's able to take it for almost a first down right there. And Desmond Davis was actually the lead running back in the game against Bakersfield. We haven't seen him the whole entire season, but he was able to come up big with some injuries. Oh, yeah, Davis, very shifty, young, fast kid, too. Now a third down and four. A third down and four, ball of their own, 44-yard line for the Moore Park Raiders. we got three wide receivers, one in the slot, two on the near sideline. The pass is in the middle, it looks like Nico Lima just dropped it. Nico Lima, number eight, the transfer out of San Jose State University. The big boy, the tight end, unable to get that reception. Yeah, Nico right there. I mean, Tanner should have thrown the ball a little bit higher, but he still put it in a good enough spot where Nico should have been able to come up with that grab. Got to make those crucial thirds downs. That's the difference between wins and losses, and, you know, that just stopped the drive right there. Three and out's going to give that defense a lot of uh, motivation and hype. Now it's going to be a fourth down and four, just about one minute off the clock. The Moore Park Raiders are known for fakes on, instead of taking the punt, a fake on a fourth down, so don't be too surprised. They are going to be punting the football, however. It's a high, deep punt. Great punt right there for the Raiders. It's going to be brought down, it looks like, at about the 15-yard line. That's where the Cougars will get their first drive of the game. A nice punt right there, putting them, that offense up in some... Un unlikely field position right there. Defense is going to have a lot of ground to work with, and let's see what they can do. RB Marlowe, number five, was there on the fair catch call, and <laughs> I know we were talking a little bit before the cameras turn on. It's funny because RB Marlowe, he's listed as a wide receiver, and his first name is RB. <laughs> I mean, right, right, definitely. <laughs> of course, that's an acronym for some, but RB, you think it would be running back, basically? Of course, of course, and uh, it's funny. But now it's going to be a first down and 10. Ball on their own 14-yard line for the Cougars coming out here on the first drive of the game, their first offensive drive. Andrew Brito, number 12, he's the quarterback. Empty backfield. We got five wide receivers spread out wide. Three on the far sideline over riding that sideline. We got a man in motion. That's R.B. Marlowe going to the backfield. It's going to be a throw out to the flat. It's going to be a halfback 
pass, and he's going to be brought down. It looks like it takes a few Raiders to bring him down. Brought down for about a five-yard gain, going to be taken at the 19. And that was a nice halfback screen right there. What they did is they had three receivers on the far side of the field there, looking like it was going to be in trips or some sort of formation, a passing formation. And then they had that running back go on that swing route, able to break it for another five, six yards. Well, he had all those blockers in front of him. Ethan Lazarek, number 13, and number 17, Hunter Schussler, is going to be on the far sideline. Draws back to Bass. Brito has nowhere to go, and he is going to be brought down. Cameron Townsend, number 51, with the big-time tackle. Excuse me, that's actually number 59 there with the big-time tackle. Jalon Kitchen set the kitchen right there. That's a nice job there by Kitchens, too, working those feet, getting off those blocks, able to make a nice hack. This, this front three right here on this defense, defensive line for Moore Park is not – a force to be reckoned with. They will destroy your offensive line if you give them time, and they did right there. And we have seen that out of Cameron Townsend, number 51, as I mentioned, but that was the wrong name, of course. Jalon Kitchen, we have seen that all season, though, so he's a great player. Third down and four, Brito looking down the middle. The pass is complete. It's going to be a first down and 10 for the Cougars. Pass completed to Ethan Lazarek, number 13, the wide receiver. Brito put that on the dime right there. That was a money pass right there crossing through multiple de defenders and hitting his receiver right on target for a nice first down. You got to make sure you can stop. You got to stop this offense on third downs. Super explosive and powerful. You got to stop the drives. Get your offense. You got to get the Raiders offense the ball back and stop this momentum from keep keep pushing. There's going to be a penalty flag against the offense. It's going to be substitution infraction against the offense. As you saw, number 11 actually was out there. Jaren Prince. He couldn't get off the field quick enough. They had a little miscommunication between him and number nine, Brandon Pierce. And mental mistakes. I mean, that's all on the offense. Nothing, nothing they couldn't do right there. They should have been more aware of what's going on. You don't need those costly penalties hurting you for no reason. It's not going to be a first down and 15. A first down and 15 ball is going to be placed at their own 32-yard line. It's going to be a halfback pitch. He has room on the left side. He's on the near sideline, and he's going to be tackled just past the first down marker, about five yards past the first down marker. J.J. Durden coming up with the big-time tackle. But R.B. Marlowe was there on the halfback pitch. And it was funny because he's listed as a wide receiver, one of the best wide receivers on the team. But we just mentioned <laughs> he's listed as a wide receiver, not a running back. But the past two plays that he had offensive connection was as a running back. Yeah, it seems they like to use him as like those slot slash halfback receivers right there types where they motion him in, bring him, bring him next to the QB in shot confirmation. And, you know, they use him very versatilely. No, on first down and 10, it's going to be a pass completed. He has some daylight in front of him on the near sideline. He's going to be brought down by a few Raiders. I mean, Drew Mathis, Hayden Galvin, Landon Altore, and J.J. Durden had to come up with those tackles. But right there, that was a great job by number six, Keelan Dwight. Yeah, White right there, just getting all that open room, just bursting it up for another 30 yards. That's a big guy right there. That took down four mm -hmm. receivers just to take him down. Everyone on this offense is, is super powerful and, they can hurt you in so many different ways. you got to be careful and key on all these different players. Keelan White, number six, is 6'1", 200 pounds. So he is a big guy out there. Looks like they had some more troubles. Oh, yeah, definitely. Looks almost like 12 men on the field. There is a penalty flag. It is going to be a substitution infraction. It is going to be against the offense. The second time it's happened on this drive alone, so... After, Interesting. Yeah, but after this drive, coaches got to talk to these guys. You can't be doing this kind of mistakes. That's just an, that's another five yards that's going to help out this defense right here. On the flip side, if I'm the defense, you got to use that momentum and capitalize on it. Keep them keep them from getting that first down and stopping that touchdown. First down, 15. It's going to be a pitch to the running back, able to get past the 20 yard line, but he's going to be brought down by a few Raiders, including Cameron Townsend, number 51. That was Keelan White on the carry. Cameron Townsend is such a big boy out here. I like how he ripped right through that mm -hmm. offensive line there and able to stop it before he could hit the outside. A lot of times once the running backs get to the outside, it's almost impossible to stop them because they just get that breakaway speed, especially for a team like the Cougars. So that was a great job there by Townsend, stopping that play before he could even get back to the line of scrimmage. Or and short gain, pardon me. And as you mentioned, uh, getting on the outside, usually most running backs, they have that big-time speed, but Cameron Townsend able to use the speed of his own to be able to come up with that big-time tackle. Now a second down and 12 is going to be a handoff straight up the middle. He is just dragging defenders with him. Drew Mathis actually has to dive on him to bring him down just past the 10-yard line. Keelan White with another big carry. And that blitz you saw almost worked right there. He just broke mm -hmm. that 
uh, hats off to White for breaking out of that, but they, that blitz caused that disruption and what made him had to reset. And once you have to restart, obviously it's going to take a second to get back up to that speed. So that blitz, even though it didn't work perfectly, it actually helped him from getting open and hitting that hole and scoring. No, third down and five, ball at the 10-yard line. Brito is in the shotgun, draws back to pass. Has nowhere to go, takes it himself. He's trying to dive in, but he's going to be brought down. Great tackle by Hayden Galvin, able to save it, save them from that touchdown. In this Moore Park secondary we've talked about all year, not afraid to hit it all. Uh, right there, we saw there Hayden up there making a great open field tackle right there. Unfortunately, they did get the first down, but Hayden, great job, hats off for stopping that touchdown run right there. A lot of times, too, when Q QBs, you saw a great defense, too. Everyone was manned up. They were running slants across the middle. Sometimes if QBs, especially like the uh, Cougars quarterback, if you got wheels, you know, they might just take off and run like a Michael Vick type. And you saw him do a lot of damage there, picking up the first down, but getting stopped just shy of that touchdown. It's not going to be a first down and goal. They're saying ball at the two-yard line. It's right at the one-and-a-half-yard line, knocking on the door of the end zone, trying to see if they'll open that door. It's going to be a quarterback keeper, Brito, straight up the middle. Hasn't signaled if it's a touchdown yet. The rest trying to break up the pile, as you see. Interesting to look at that. It looks like it will be a touchdown. The refs still have not signaled it yes yet. It looks like he's just going to be, they're placing about an inch shy of the end zone. Wow. Nice stop right there. I know that's a go-to play for almost all offenses, no matter what you got. Just QB rush on the one. And they're going to hurry up. They're going to try to have a quarterback keeper. It looks like he's in this time. They're still going to have to break up the pile. It looks like he might have got the football, the cross. The Moore Park Raiders are saying no. It looks like they might have stopped him just a few inches shy. I mean, the nose of the football cannot sniff past this <laughs> past in the end zone. Great defensive stand right there. Two times in a row stopping them on the six-inch line. This will create stability and actually – this offense will start respecting his defense more with plays like that. Probably going to have to go to something else. Not, I guarantee they won't run a QB sneak three times in a row. Most of the time, though, it's always, almost always guaranteed to work. But when you've got a great defensive line like this Moore Park Raiders group, it's not going to happen. And this is Darren Blackshear, the backup quarterback that's in. It looks like he has it this time. He was able to get off the block, and he was able to score on the near sideline just outside of the tackle. So it's going to be a touchdown for the Cougars, getting the first points up of the game. And they almost stopped him again, but you saw him get out of that tackle and kind of spin his way over. Hats off, though, to the Raiders for having a great defensive stand on the six-inch line. Not much you can do right there, but sometimes, you know, they're just going to get the best of you. But that was a great stand right there. This defensive line is super powerful, and it's not very often that they let that happen. Now for the PAT attempt, Justin Dennison. He's the kicker. Listed as a defensive back, but he's the kicker in, and the PAT attempt is up, and it's good. The COC Cougars winning this game 7 to nothing against the Moore Park Raiders with 7.50 left in the first quarter of action. Now, as you mentioned, of course, COC, they were able to march down the field. That first set of play, the first set of downs, they were actually able to make them go to the third down. Maybe not the best defense play throughout the rest of the field, but when it came down to the goal line stand, when it came down to either we're just going to give a touchdown or we're going to fight, the Moore Park Raiders stood up and they fought. I was really happy with what I saw there on the goal line stand. Even though they gave it the touchdown, I was still very happy that it took, uh, it took the Cougars three plays to go six inches. Right, right, yeah, definitely, man. You know, this, you can see this defense, you know, they got a lot of fight, and they have a lot of skill of their own. They can match up with almost anybody, but they got to be more key on these third downs. They can't – we saw three huge third downs that the Cougars converted on, and if they mm -hmm. can stop those, that's changing the ball game up a lot. It usually is a game of third downs, but now after the touchdown, the Cougars are going to be kicking it off to the Moore Park Raiders. As you see, Vinny Corso, Vincent Corso on the far hash mark. He's actually going to be returning it right around his own six-yard line is where he's going to be returning it from. A lot of blocking in front of him. He goes, cuts back middle. He's still running, and he's going to be brought down right around the 32-yard line. So some more great field position for the Raiders off of Vinny Corso's back-to-back -back kickoff returns. Yeah, Vinny Corso so fast and shifty. I mean, you just saw him run from one after the field to the other, getting his team a nice uh, set of downs, setting them up right there on the 32. Vinny Corso, you know, he plays slot receiver, punt return, kickoff return. He we even saw him a quarterback against Fullerton. Mm -hmm. I mean, this kid can do it all. So Moore Park's very lucky to have Vinny on their team, and watch out for him tonight to make some plays. Now Tanner Darling leading the bat, the offense back here for the Moore Park Raiders. Ryan Matlock, number four, the wide receiver on the near sideline. Great wide receiver, hasn't been too uh, used too much this season. Hopefully he'll be able to get some more receptions on this drive. 
On first down 10, fake handoff, play action pass, and is almost picked off. Vinny Corso, intended receiver on the play, made an out route, but the cornerback was able to cut that route off and almost come up with a pick. It looks like that's number 15 there, Darius Vukabradov. Yeah, Darius right there. Uh, nice key play. Uh, you can tell right there he zoned in on the receiver right there, making an out route. And he was able to jump the route when he saw that ball coming out. Great play right there. Almost had a pick. Tanner's lucky that was intercepted for six. When you have a last name like Vuka Bradov, you, you got to come with some big-time plays. Definitely. It's going to be a handoff on a second down and ten. And Desmond Davis is going to be brought back for a loss of three. Big-time loss on the play right there. Yeah, nice play right there by Noel coming around the backside. So many defensive ends nowadays are so quick. I mean, they're not just they're not just these big guys that are meant to block and stop the short runs. I mean, these are some very quick guys, especially on the other side for Raiders, people like Drew Math is so mm -hmm. quick and, and big. I mean, these are next level players for sure. So nice play there by Noel by getting all the way around and stopping his legs before Martin could get it going right there. Now coming up a third down and 13, seven minutes left in the first quarter. It's still down by seven for the Moore Park Raiders. Darling is going to be in a shotgun formation, a high snap, able to gain a hold of it. But he's going to be brought down. He had a double duo coming at him. Dorian Gerald, number 99, was coming off to his right side. He was able to dodge that. But coming up with the sack was number 46, Noel Iwuchukwu. Noel right there, great play. I mean, this defensive line is so strong and they can get you in so many ways, but yeah, you saw right there. It's not always about just making the sack, but causing pressure, just like you saw Tanner was able to get out, but he was almost stuck right after he moved, and then Noel comes through and gets the sack. So, you know, he'll probably get the assisted sack right there, but, mm -hmm. you know, and that's still important. Well, two big-time names coming up with some big-time defensive plays. Definitely, yeah. You had Vuka Bradov, and then you had, you had Iwu Chukwu coming up with those. A punt for Moore Park does not take the bounce that they would have liked it to, and it's going to actually go out of bounds right around right around 50-yard line. So great field position coming out for the Cougars. Yeah, I mean, that's what's, what's happened. Sometimes, you know, in these third three and outs, what happens is obviously it's going to give the Cougars more and more confidence and momentum, which is one of the biggest keys in football. But as you see, I mean, they're pinned there on their own 15 after taking that sack. So when they punt it, you mm -hmm. know, there's only so much the punter can do there. It kicks it all the way down to the 50, but – you know, now all the Cougars got to do is move within, you know, move a couple 20, 25 yards, and they're already in field goal range. So it's really, it, you know, it's a constant battle of ball possession and moving the ball down the field and getting those first downs because otherwise it'll just hurt you all night long. Now on a first down and 10 ball at the 50-yard line, Brito drops back to pass, has nowhere to go, and he's actually going to nail it down. It's going to be incomplete. Number 11, Jaron Pierce was the intended receiver on the play. Nice job there by Moore Park staying consistent in their zones right there, too. They're trying to run a crossing route. Pull, which usually with the whole point of that is they're trying to pull linebackers out of their zone so that they can hit someone right down the middle. But good job right there of them staying consistent and focused and staying in their own zone so that they're able to cause that incompletion. Pierce should be sponsored by Butterfingers after that one. It went straight through both of his hands. Definitely, yeah. Now coming up with a second down and 10. Ball still at the 50-yard line. There is going to be a penalty flag. However, it's going to be a false start against the offense. That's what they're motioning to. So now it's going to be a second down and 15 coming up. So losing five more yards right now. I mean, penalties after penalties for the Cougars this game. I mean, that's their third penalty right there on the offense. I mean, these mental errors are really, are really what hurts you your confidence and hurt your game play. I mean, Moore Park keeps giving these, getting these opportunities here to set them up in worse and worse field position, but they need to capitalize on it with this long second down and get this, get a three and out going. So yes, yeah, so on a second down and 15, looking for the slant route. It is completed to Ethan Lazarick, number 13, able to gain some more yards. Lazarick right there with the nice hands. You know, just a nice simple slant route, but always trustworthy, always trustworthy in situations where you have second and long, third and long. You know, you're not trying to get the first down, but you are trying to move that ball to give yourself an easier third down, and therefore you have more play calls you can run with that. It's now going to be a third down and six. Ball is going to be placed at the 46-yard line. Brito dropping back to pass with 5.30 left in the first quarter. He's getting chased by Richard Watkins. He's getting chased by all the Raiders. Some big-time blocks. Interesting not see a block in the back, but the pass is completed down the field right around the 30-yard line. That's actually completed to RB Marlowe, number five, coming up with the catch. We've already seen Marlowe do a lot of damage tonight, and that's what we're talking about, quarterbacks that are so mobile and can run around, they can hurt you because, I mean, the pressure got there. You know, the DB, mm -hmm. the 
defensive ends for Moore Park were coming off the edge, but when they're so quick like that, you know, he could just run around, and he has more and more time to make a play happen, and there's not much you could do there. Richard Watkins, Jalon Kitchen, they were both there. They were sending the kitchen on the play, but it just seems like they weren't able to get a hold of him. Unfortunately, left some iffy blocks there, but, I mean, it is going to set up a first down and 10 anyways. It's going to be a quarterback option. He's going to pitch it to the fullback. The fullback's only able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Nice play right there, too, by number 12, uh, Nichols, for for making that stop right there. You saw him come up and hit him before. It was too late. It was a good job right there by the defense making plays. Second and 10 right now. Yeah, it's going to be a second down and 10. Ball still at the 29-yard line. Usual formation going to be in the shotgun is Brito. Got four wide receivers, two in the slot, balance on both sidelines. He's going for the go route. He has a wide open field. It's going to be, it looks like he just stepped out of bounds, but it is going to be a catch. Number eight, Deshaun Holmes, able to come up with the electrifying catch. Deshaun Holmes, one of the Cougars' primary receivers there. There's reasons why they have that guy going one-on-one -on -one, because they trust him on plays like that. Nice pickup right there, but he didn't score, so let's see if this Moore Park defense can stop him. We saw last on last drive, I mean, it took him three downs to get six inches, so let's see if they can harden up here and stop him from getting into that end zone. Hey, they have to go a whole yard this time. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> if, the, if the Raiders could stop them on two back-to-back -back plays on – six inches then imagine what they could do if it's going to be a first uh, a whole one yard that they have to go definitely yeah. they're not going to give him this touchdown easy it's going to be a wildcat offensive formation he's going to be brought down for a loss of yards great job right there by the moore park raiders and you saw right there yeah running that option uh that moore park defense blowing it up right there by drew mathis coming in making that play i mean he's so explosive and he's one of the best players on this moore park defense you know, plays like that is what helps you win ball games, right there. I mean, they just moved him from the one yard line to the five, it's causing a, causing a lot a lot harder for them to score. Yeah, Drew Mathis, number ten; Hayden Galvin, number seventeen; JJ Durden, number fifteen. All there. Great job. It's going to be a a second down. It's going to be a second down goal ball at the four yard line, knocking on the door of the end zone for the Cougars right now. Draws back to pass. Pass is complete. It's going to be another touchdown now to R.B. Marlowe for the Cougars, getting their second touchdown of the game with about 250 left in the first quarter. Nice play call, too. Quick out routes are so hard to stop, especially when you're pinned up against the end zone right there. Just running that quick little five-yard out, it's so hard to stop. Good job by Marlowe securing the ball and getting the touchdown. Let's see here if the Moore Park Raiders can come back. You know, just put a field goal, something up on the board so they can get some momentum going here and instill some confidence in this offense. It's not like the Raiders are playing bad right now. They just they just haven't gotten it rolling on the offensive side and on the defensive side. They have been playing fairly well. It's just the big time plays, like that big time play down the field with that go route. That that's what got them in that position. So it's just some iffy plays here and there are just kind of killing the Raiders, especially with the field position. But as we were saying that the PAT attempt was up and it's good. So the Cougars are now winning fourteen to nothing. All right, yeah, Ryan. Like the field position is so important in football. I mean. They keep getting, this defense keeps getting pinned within the 50, 40 yard line and they keep working on it. So just got to get some better field position going here. Now while we have a little break in the action, we're going to thank a few of our sponsors. Of course, we cannot do it without you. So thank you very much for supporting us here at Moore Park College. U.S. Army, go on business trips with a company like no other. U.S. Army, Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. Wells Fargo, UCLA Health, it begins with you. UCLA Health. And Moore Park Center for Dentistry. We care about our community as much as you do at Moore Park Center for Dentistry. Thank you very much to all of our sponsors. Now back to the game. The Cougars are going to be kicking the football off, of course, after scoring the touchdown, getting a score of 14 to nothing against the Moore Park Raiders. Vinny Corso electrifying return man. I mean, <laughs> the Cougars definitely do not want to kick it to him for a third time. It looks like they're not going to kick it to him again. It's going to be a return at their own 21-yard line. Looks like Tawan Funch is number 34, able to bring it all the way back to the 35-yard line. So still a great return when you don't want to kick it to Vinny and you kick it to someone else, someone else steps up. Exactly, yeah. Vinny's already established that he's a threat here on this kick returning team, and you see that's why they kicked it short. <clears throat> but that was a good pickup right there. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're starting with good field position, but they're not finishing with good field position position and what I mean by that is they're going these quick three and outs and like the punts are only going 20 to 30 yards here so this offense for the Cougars only has to drive down 
you know, a couple 20, 30 yards before they were back in a field goal range. So they need a couple first downs here to pick up some momentum. Not a first down and 10. Ball at the 35-yard line. It's going to be a handoff. Davis. Davis just brought down. It looks like one yard shy of the line of scrimmage. So he's going to be brought down for a loss of one. And, yeah, ankle tackle right there. Just about to break it outside for at least five or six yards. But nice nice tackle right there, stopping him before he could get those feet moving. But So now it's going to bring up a second down and 11. Second down and 11. Ball at the 34-yard line for the Moore Park Raiders. They got a... Four wide receivers set, two in the slot, overriding the near sideline with three wide receivers. Darling is going to be in the shotgun formation. It looks like it's going to be offsides against the defense. It's going to be a little screen pass play out to the flat to Mark Martin, able to get a first down, and the penalty is going to be going against the defense. That was actually the big boy, Dorian Gerald. Dorian Gerald, he's the one that we talked about in pregame, coming up with an assisted sack on the last drive, and now he steps offside, so that's going to just keep marching the Raiders even forward off of that first down for Mark Martin. Yeah, yeah and that's that's what, one of the best things an offense can get there. That's a free play. No matter what happens, interception, fumble, he's, that offense is still going to get the ball the next play, so way to capitalize, get that first down, and on top of that, get an extra couple yards with that offside penalty. So now it's going to be a first down and 10, a first down and 10 ball on their own 47-yard line for the Moore Park Raiders. Usual formation we've seen out here this season for the Raiders. Darling dropping back to pass. They double-team Jalen. It's going to be just incomplete. Yeah, right through his hands. He's got to look it in all the way before he gets too excited. A lot of times players won't look the ball, and they'll get so excited about getting that first down or just want to run with it. They'll kind of turn their head. So she's needs to focus a little bit longer on that ball and, you know, get that first down going. Already got one going. Let's see him keep driving right now. Christian Gray is number 11, and 10 a wide receiver on the play. He's actually on the far sideline. We got Lorenzo Berardi, number 19, and William Boucher, number 23, on the near sideline. It's now a second down and 10. Ball still at the 47 yard line. It's going to be a handoff to Desmond Davis. They thought it was going to be a quarterback keeper, but Davis does have the football, able to push it forward for about a one yard gain. As you saw, some of the defensive linemen, they actually saw that Darling was going to have the football. So great job by him by actually handing it off to Davis and making sure that he does not keep it on the quarterback option. Yeah, smart move right there from Darling to give it to Davis, but Davis should have kept it inside instead of trying to cut it outside. He would have got a couple mm -hmm. more yards there, but just trying to make the best of what he can. So third down right here, I want to see this offense maybe throw the ball a little bit more. Yeah, we do need to establish that passing offense to be able to make sure they don't stack the box. Like, they're <laughs> look how many guys are on the line. We got eight guys on the line right now for for the Cougars showing a blitz, and they are going to send the blitz. It's going to be a pass up the middle. Nico Lima coming up with a big-time reception. It's going to be a first down for the Raiders, and it's great to see Nico Lima being used now in this offensive scheme. He was injured earlier on in the season. Coming back last week, did not have too much production, just used as a run-block tight end, but now coming up with a reception, great to see him getting a catch. Uh, Nico Lima, big boy. He can move and he can block. I mean, what, kid, what can't this kid do? Nice first down, consistency, and clutching up for this offense, keeping the drive alive. Now in the first and 10 is going to be a pass out to the receiver. He's going to bring it all the way down to a first down. Great job right there from the Raiders. Yeah, nice nice wheels right there, catching the ball and just go, you know, not you know, being a north and south runner instead of west and east. Exactly. So. Vinny Corson was not going to be looking behind him. There's only 20 seconds left in the first quarter, so Moore Park Raiders trying to ride this momentum right now, just getting first down after first down. Darling, it's going to be a fake handoff quarterback keeper. He's going to go straight to the middle on the quarterback option. Almost gets tackled by the referee, but he's going to be brought down right at about the 23-yard line, just one yard shy of the first down marker. A nice move right there by Darling to keep it. You know, this kid's got some serious wheels, so right when he kept it, he saw a gap open up right there, watching that option, watching those linebackers bite on that running back and was able to cut it up for about a nine-yard gain. Nice, nice move right there. And now that does signal the end of the first quarter of action. The COC Cougars are beating the Moore Park Raiders right now, 14 to nothing. The Moore Park Raiders, unfortunately, putting up a goose egg, but they are making a nice drive down the field. Everything is going for them right now. 
but this is going to be a big time game because the next game is against Ventura. It is the Citrus Cup at Moore Park College, home of the Raiders at the Griffith Stadium. The Moore Park Raiders are going to be hosting the Ventura Pirates. It's going to be sponsored by DCH Auto Group, delivering customer happiness on October 28th. That Saturday is next Saturday. Sponsored also by DCH Lexus of Oxnard. They are a big time sponsor and we thank you for supporting us here at Moore Park College. Also, something that's great, if you want to have have a football if you never had a football or you just want to have a football or you support breast cancer awareness definitely come out to this game los robles hospital medical center are giving out breast cancer awareness pink footballs yes i said pink footballs for breast cancer awareness they're giving them out to almost everybody in attendance they gave out over 2,000 last year so make sure that you come out to support the moore park raiders against the ventura pirates is going to be the Citrus Cup on October 28th at Griffith Stadium, home of the Moore Park Raiders. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good to see an organization giving back like that for such a great cause as well. Now on a second down in about one, Desmond Davis gets the handoff at the start of the second quarter. Once again, Ryan Ketchum, Nick Federico here with your Moore Park Raider coverage. Nice job by Davis right there trying to break a couple tackles, but that line, that gap closed so quick. But fortunately, he did pick up that first down, and he's going to keep this drive alive. So Raiders, second quarter already, by the end of this first quarter, going into the second quarter, they're showing a lot more life, and they're moving down. You know, they're in scoring position now, and this, we got a ball game going right now. I am liking how they're driving right now. I mean, the offensive scheme is just great. The, the play calling, they're, they're, they're calling everything correct on this drive. So it's just great to see them marching down the field. It's going to be a first down and 10, looking out to the flat. It's going to be completed to Mark Martin. Mark Martin dragged out of bounds for about a four-yard gain. It's actually going to be marked down for a, a three-yard gain, excuse me. Mark Martin, too, very versatile right there. I like how they ran him on that swing route, trying to get him out there in open space. He was able to pick up a couple yards, but good open field tackling right there by that corner from stopping him from getting that first down going. Now it's going to be a second down and seven. Already about a minute taken off the second quarter clock. I mean, with the <laughs> with the two running plays, I mean, there was a passing play, but basically almost a run because he was able to get in balance and the clock's just going to continue to run. So uh, this is definitely going by quick right now. There is a penalty on the field against... Interesting to see what that play that, that penalty call was, but the pass was completed to William Boucher, number 23 of the Moore Park Raiders. Yeah, penalties, I mean, they're going to kill you, so they gotta, they got to get together right there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Moore Park Raiders have struggled in the past, but today this was their first – oh, pardon me, another incorrection right there. Good job by there for Moore Park being disciplined. That's on the Cougars. That's their fourth penalty today. Penalties are killing the Cougars. So far, Moore Park hasn't been able to capitalize on them, but I think they are right now. Second – Offsides penalty against the Cougars so far in this game, giving the Raiders some more life. Now with a second down and two, marching down the field. It's going to be a handoff and just not, not a good situation there. A handoff to Desmond Davis, but the defense was all over it. It was a quarterback option, so if Darling took it, he would get nailed as well. If Desmond Davis took it, he would get nailed as well. So there was just there was no positive side out of that play. Right, right. And with the forward progress rule, I mean, they're not going to take them all the way back. Uh -huh. But sometimes the best thing you can do is actually go down, as bad as it sounds. When you're losing that many yards, sometimes you just got to go down and not try and fight because it, eventually if you do keep moving, they will pull it back farther and farther. Now a third down and six, a third down and six ball at the 18-yard line inside the red zone for the Moore Park Raiders. Knocking on the door of the end zone right now. The door is open for the Cougars. Hopefully it will open for the Raiders. John Bad to pass, looking near sideline. The pass is completed. Lorenzo Berardi, number 19, coming up with a big time catch on his knees. Nice corner route right there by Lorardi. Hitting that about 10 yards and coming across. Good catch, way to secure the ball. And Raiders right here, knocking on the door of scoring right here. This is a huge set of downs coming up right now. Raiders really need to put some points on the board and put a, get a touchdown more than anything right now. Keep themselves in this game. It's now going to be a first down and goal. Ball at the five-yard line. If they weren't knocking on the door end zone already, they are knocking on the door right now. Darling is actually going to be, looks like, trying to get his team together. Nico Lima, Eddie and Bata both out there on opposite sidelines just trying to get some blocking in. But we are going to have a timeout right now. So it's going to be a timeout. The Cougars 
are winning 14 to nothing is going to be a timeout by COC against the Moore Park Raiders. But Moore Park Raiders, we're going to be coming back with a first down and goal at the five yard line. While we have a little bit of break in action, we're going to thank a few of our sponsors once again. Thank you very much for sponsoring us. We cannot do without you. So thank you very much. The lender you can call home, Penny Mac. Let us tackle all your mortgage needs, Penny Mac. DCH Auto Group, delivering customer happiness. DCH Auto Group, nationwide is on your side, nationwide. Jersey Mike Subs, since 1956, a sub above. Jersey Mike Subs. And Los Robles Hospital Medical Center, well within reach. Los Robles Hospital and metal cent, uh, medical center excuse me and as we mentioned earlier on in the game once again thank you very much for all our sponsors but as we mentioned earlier on in the game the Ventura College game October 28th Los Robles Hospital Medical Center they're going to be handing out pink footballs for breast cancer awareness so make sure you come out of that game it's also going to be sponsored by DCH Auto Group delivering customer happiness so make sure that you support your Moore Park Raiders in the Citrus Cup against the Ventura Pirates the Ventura College Pirates at Griffith Stadium on October 28th. Great game and a great cause. On a first down and goal at the five yard line, Desmond Davis gets the handoff on the outside, but he's gonna be brought down about two yards, a two yard loss, I should say. Yeah, they, you saw them right before they called that timeout, they had Bada in there, Nico, they had the big boys in there, looking like they're gonna go straight up the middle, but then they switched it out, brought Davis in, and you can see they're trying to go outside with some more speed out there, but after losing, after that loss, I think they're gonna try and go back to some passes right now. Maybe some quick slant routes as we see Berardi's on the near sideline spread out wide. We also have William Boucher on the far sideline, Vinny Corso in the slot on the near sideline. Got Tanner Darling is in the shotgun formation with Desmond Davis in the backfield to his right side. Yeah, Vinny in the slot. I mean, watch out. He's most likely going aiming for Vinny. John about to pass, and you called it. Vinny Corso gets the reception. He's down right at about the five-yard line. They're actually going to call him down, yes, at the five. So he's going to gain about three on the play. It's going to set up a third down and goal ball at the five. Nice out right there by Vinny and catching that ball and securing it. Look for Vinny on this next play as well. I mean, he's so versatile. He can get open in this quick little spots, and especially when you're on the five-yard line. A lot of these quick hitches, out routes, slants, all these routes that are very hard to cover for a defense is what we're going to be seeing right now. Cameron Prentice Brown, excuse me, the number two wide receiver for the Moore Park Raiders. He's going to be in the slot now on the far sideline, joined alongside Vinny Corso and William Boucher. Lorenzo Berardi on the near sideline with a four wide receiver set, three on the far sideline. Going to Vinny, excuse me, going to Lorenzo Berardi, and it looks like he caught the football. There are penalty flags, however, they're calling it a touchdown. A few, one of the rest is calling it a touchdown. They are calling a penalty. It looks like Lorenzo Berardi might have actually came up with that touchdown reception if all the penalties go the Moore Park Raiders' way. Lorenzo seems to be their big guy right now for the Raiders. Just two on running right there. Tanner just throws it up. Lorenzo jump ball, comes down with it. Great hands, great jumping ability, and he's a threat. Let's see if this play stands, though. Lorenzo Berardi is six foot one, 175 pound freshman wide receiver for the Moore Park Raiders coming out of San Fernando, California. But he's definitely a threat, and it looks like they are going to be calling a touchdown. It's going to be a personal foul, hands, illegal hands on the face, maybe like a little face mask action, trying to get rid of Lorenzo Berardi in the end zone. He's actually going to come up with that touchdown reception. So the Moore Park Raiders get it on the board for the first time tonight with a touchdown. Very explosive. I'm liking this offense more and more as he's derives and this game develops they're attacking it more and more and you've seen they've established a lot more of the passing game than they have in previous games so you know they're back in this game only down by uh, eight here probably going to be seven after this PAT but I'm liking this more Park Raiders moving the ball staying consistent staying in this game and they're giving these Cougars a run for their money right now they are giving them a run for their money Riley Garrett the PAT attempt is up and it's good there is a penalty flag once again it seems like all the penalties are going up against the College of the Canyons, and it looked like this one is most likely going to be going against them right now. But Riley Garrett, number 99, a little quick anecdote about him. He, in the Bakersfield game, if you're watching the Bakersfield game with us, our coverage, he actually nailed a 45-yard field goal. We were talking about that a little bit in the pregame. He nailed a 45-yarder, the the deepest one of his career. So great job by him. He's definitely getting the confidence. So he's ready to make sure he gets all those PAT attempts to be able to be good and all those field goals. There is going to be 
a personal foul against the defense, so that's why the penalty was thrown, and it's going to be assessed on the kickoff. So instead of kicking it off from where they usually do, they're going to be moved about 10 yards further up. Yeah, and these penalties, I mean, these Cougars really got to get together. It's all about mental toughness, and, and they're not playing with any right now. They're, they're making all these mental mistakes, and it's, it's hurt them. I mean, we saw a couple times during this last drive that penalties extended the drive for Moore Park. So this is only going to hurt them now with field position when Moore Park gets a better spot to kick it. And, yes, they are going to be having a better spot. And, I mean, with Riley Garrett's leg, <laughs> that thing's just going to go way deep outside of the end zone. It might even hit the play clock that we see. There's a play clock on – Basically, on the left side of the field, on the left side of your screen, if you look all the way down, if we're able to actually cash that for you, there is a play clock. You can see it's at 25 right now. There's also one on the scoreboard, so both teams can see it. And if the ball's placed at the 35-yard line, I mean, yeah. Riley Gary can definitely kick it that far. But what they're trying to do, most likely what I would do, is I would try to pin them, not try to just kick it in the, mm -hmm. for a touchback. You want to pin them inside the five, which you'll probably see a short boot kick right now. Exactly. And it looks like they're going for an onside kick. It goes 10 yards. It goes the 10 yards necessary. The Moore Park Raider bench is going electrified. They're just celebrating all over. It looks like the Raiders might have actually landed on the football. And, yes, it looks like they did. They have the ball at the 20-yard line. Wow. I like the gutsy call right there by Mike. That's a great call. You know, they only say it's a great call when it pays off. But you know what? Sometimes you got to take the risk. I really like how they did that right there. No one's really expecting that. And that's what I'm talking about with these errors right there. That penalty caused them to be on 35-yard line. So then they go for the onside kick. They capitalize on it, and now they're looking at they're at the 20-yard line starting their drive. That's it's insane. So, great job by the Moore Park Raiders right there. Heads up play, and great job for them to get the ball back right there. Yeah, I mean, my oh my sweet cherry pie. That was a nice, a nicely timed onside kick, and a great way to do it because of course it just has to go 10 yards, so it just has to reach the 25-yard line, and they're actually able to dive on it at the 20-yard line. It went 15 yards before the Cougars even knew what was going on. I mean, the Raiders had it all the way. Definitely, definitely. It's risky call, but paid off in the end. Worth it. Now it's going to be a first down and 10. Ball at the 20-yard line inside the red zone here for the Moore Park Raiders. Drive back to pass, thrown out to the flat. Eddie Inbata is able to catch it, and he just puts his shoulder down, able to get seven yards. Wow, big-time play by Bata. Bata is such a monster, 6'2", 220. All speed and muscle right there, just lowering his shoulder. Sometimes that's what you got to do, too, make him pay for trying to tackle. Good job right there, and a nice seven-yard pickup right there. This Moore Park offense is moving the ball, and they're playing better than I've seen them play all year so far right now. Bad about a swing on that one. It's going to be a second down and three coming up for the Moore Park Raiders at the 13-yard line. So many different threats, too, with this Moore Park, with this running back crew. It's crazy. They can hurt you in so many different ways. Now on the second down and three, Darling is in the shotgun formation. Draws back to pass. Looks out to the flat to battle once again. And the football's on the ground. It doesn't look like they're calling it a catch. It looks like it's just going to be an incomplete pass. Luckily enough for the Raiders, it was not a backwards thrown pass as well. It looked like that could have been whenever you're thrown out to the uh, the flat like that where the running back isn't past the line of scrimmage it always looks like that could be almost a lateral type pass play so if that was the case it would have been a fumble but luckily enough it was just an incomplete pass right. and they always tell quarterbacks too when you're throwing those those risky swing routes and stuff to aim that ball just curve it a little bit forward just to make sure that you don't ever run into those kind of problems but luckily he didn't have possession of it and that way that, that's why it wasn't a fumble right there if he would have had possession taken a couple steps it would have hurt him Third down three is going to be a handoff to Davis. Davis tries to spin out of the tackle, but he's going to be brought down by his shoelaces. Yeah, and nothing you could do right there. That defensive line for the Cougars there blew it up. and Didn't have anywhere really to go. Let's see if they're going to go for right here, or, you know, keep this offense out here. If I'm them, I would just kick the field goal, establish some points, but it looks like they're going to go for it. And, I mean, they've already had one gutsy call. They're one for one. Let's see if they can get another. If they can get this first down, they're going to have huge momentum coming, and it's really going to pay off. Let's see what they let's see if they can get the first down right here. Eric Banks, number ninety four, coming up with that tackle, saying the bank is always open. Now on a fourth down and five, the offense is out there. Lorenzo Berardi on the near sideline, number nineteen on the far sideline. We got Vincent Corso, number twenty, and number twenty three, William Boucher, Mark Martin in the backfield. Tanner Darling's in the shotgun formation. They snap the football and it looks like they are able to call a timeout. The play clock was winding down. So luckily enough the Raiders are not going to be they're not going to be getting that penalty, luckily enough. That was a very close call, but the coach is able to call a timeout. All right, and I think they're going to talk this over, maybe actually bring out that specialties team right there for the uh, for the field goal, pardon me. But 
if I'm there, if I'm going to go for it on fourth down, you know, I'm not aiming for a touch right now. I just need about six yards. What I'm doing is I'm aiming for the sticks. I'd run like a quick hitch route, something like that, maybe a, maybe a slant, something that'll just give me that first down. On plays like this, you're not aiming for the whole thing right there. You just want a couple yards just to pick up that first down, keep the drive alive, and then you can start worrying about what you're going to do about this touchdown. Exactly. That's all you need. And while we have a little break in the action, we're going to thank a few more of our sponsors. Once again, we cannot do it without you, so thank you very much for sponsoring us. Cricket, something to smile about. Cricket Wireless. Stonefire Grill, where community is served. Stonefire Grill. IBEW Local 47, Southern California's life powered for over 125 years. IBEW Local 47. Latin Auto Group, family owned and operated for over 45 years. Always close to home. Latin Auto Group. And The Hat, serving world famous pastrami, burgers, dogs, chili for 67 years. The Hat. And now while we're back, Riley Garrett, number 99, is out there with the field goal unit. So as you were saying, it looked like they didn't have the looks that they wanted on the defensive side to be able to have that correct play call. The field goal kick is up, and it looks like he just shanked it a little bit left. So it's going to be no good on the field goal kick. The Moore Park Raiders didn't put 10 up there. They are now back to a 14-7 deficit. Yeah, and you saw right there, I don't know if the snap was messed up right there, but you saw the way that ball was curved. It looked like there could have been you know, some problems right there with the snap holder, maybe the way it came off his foot. But those kind of things really hurt you. You've got to always capitalize points whenever you can. So let's see if this defense, who's been been stellar all year, and especially tonight, let's see if they can get a three and out going here, give this offense the ball again so they can put some points up. But you know, you never like to see them come away with empty-handed, but good job by the Cougars right there to make it happen. One thing that is great is the ball's at the 20-yard line. So they're not putting it, like, at their own 20-yard line. They're just putting it where it was basically – at the 20-yard line, so they're putting them not at great field position. On a first down and 10, however, they are able to pass it. The pass is completed right there to number eight, Deshaun Holmes. He's actually able to get 11-yard reception for a first down. And now you see the Cougars coming out here and attacking, just throwing passes here, just trying to make up for that lost time that they weren't able to get when they lost that onside kick there. But you can see them coming out a lot more aggressive here, just throwing it deep. The Cougars trying to sink their teeth in the Raiders' defense. It's going to be a handoff straight up the middle, able to get about a gain of five on the carry. That's once again number six is out there, Keelan White. Yeah, you saw a gap open up right there. Picks it up for a nice couple yards. Keep those feet moving. So key as a running back, too. You never give up on a play. As long as you keep your feet moving, you always get a couple yards. Right there, was able to get a nice chunk of five and a half, it looks like. Second down and five, 8.20 left in the first half. Second quarter of action, 14-7. The score still stands. College of the Canyons are beating the Moore Park Raiders right now. It's going to be on this second down. The pass is completed. It looks like he is just around the first down marker. That was Jaron Prince. You saw. Uh, excuse me, Pierce. And you saw right there, number 75 for the Cougars, uh, Alex Rockwell try and clip right there and you got to be careful about that because mm -hmm. that usually can be very costly 15-yard penalty they didn't see it so they didn't call it but clipping is frowned upon obviously in football so that was a risky move right there to make that could have brought that first down back and send them back an extra 15 yards if they would have got caught doing that can't be playing smart got to play with mental toughness it's now going to be a first down and 10 a first down and 10 ball on the 41 yard line their own 41 yard line for the cougars Cougars got three wide receivers, two on the far side line. It's going to be a handoff to White. White trying to get some room on the outside, and he does. He's on the far side line. Hayden Galvin is the one man to be. He dies, tries to go for the tackle, but it's going to be no good. It's going to be a touchdown. Keelan White, number six, taking it all the way for the Cougars. That was actually a 59-yard touchdown run. There is a penalty flag, however, down on the field. And they could be coming back. That would be a huge break for the Moore Park Raiders. But like we were talking about, you can't let these running backs get to the outside. Once they do, they hit on those turbos, and they're almost always gone. So White there with those dangerous wheels, you know, was able to take advantage once he hit that outside. And it's crazy, too. You get the smallest little gap. You know, he maybe had a yard between him and the defender, and just so fast, no one can even touch him by the time he gets to that edge. You saw Hayden with a great effort trying to come back mm -hmm. there, make a tackle. But, you know, when you're that fast, it's, it's hard to catch him. Yes, Keelan White did put on the wheels. He pushed that turbo boost all the way down. But with the penalty flag, interesting what they're calling it. It looks like it will be. It's going to be personal foul, hands to the face, illegal hands to the face against the Moore Park Raiders. So it's going to be a touchdown. Keelan White. 
putting College of the Canyons back up on the scoreboard. It's going to be a 20 to 7 lead, most likely 21 to 7. Here comes the extra point PAT attempt. Yeah, Moore Park's got to capitalize on that drive. Don't let them, don't let them start to get away with this lead here. We saw this Moore Park offense start to move too, move that ball before they were stopped last drive. So let's see if they can come back out here and do it again. That defense, on the other hand, you know sometimes that's going to happen. You're going to you're going to catch breaks. Things are going to happen. They're going to get one or two lucky plays, but other than that, you got to keep driving. Interesting to see this once again. There is another missed kick. This one, a PAT attempt for the College of the Canyon Cougars. They just shanked it this time, so it's going to be incomplete. It's a 20 to seven lead for the Cougars over the Moore Park Raiders. And while we have another little small break in the action, we're going to thank a few more of our sponsors once again. In and out, freshness you can taste. In and out. Harley's Simi Bowl presents College Cosmic Night every Thursday night from 9 p.m. to midnight. $8 with a college ID and $12 without a college ID. At Harley's Simi Bowl, make sure you check out Harley's Simi Bowl and Harley's Camarillo with Harley's Valley Bowl. All three are owned by Harley's, and they all have College Cosmic Nights just on different days. Uh, Harley's Simi Bowl is on Thursday nights, however. Powerade, fuel to power through. Powerade, Nine Design, print and interactive media. Nine Design, and Corner Bakery, proud to support all scholar athletes at Moore Park College at Corner Bakery. Thank you very much to all of our sponsors. And Corner Bakery, it does support all of our scholar athletes, and we actually have 16 intercollegiate sports, intercollegiate athletics at Moore Park College, wrestling, baseball, softball, football, basketball for men's and women's track and field, just to name a few. So Moore Park College is definitely a great, a great school for sports. Definitely, definitely. Now, earlier we saw that Miss PAT, and some people think, oh, it's just a point. It won't hurt too bad. But, you know, football is all about, you know, a game of inches and whatnot. And you see here, you know, it's 20 to 7, but Moore Park scores two touchdowns. All of a sudden they have a one-point lead. And, you know, we've seen games in the past come down to missed field goals or missed PATs, fumbled snaps. So that one point can be detrimental to this Cougar offense if they can't capitalize on the next drive and get a two-point conversion to clear that up right there. Going back to our intercollegiate athletics at Moore Park College, the women's volleyball team, coached by Adam Black, they actually had a tough matchup against Santa Barbara City College Vaqueros as on a first down and 10, almost intercepted right there off of the Tanner Darling pass intended for Vinnie Corso. But as I was saying, uh, the women's volleyball team, they have a great team. They were actually able to win in four sets against one of the best teams in the area against Santa Barbara. So that means more Park Raiders, they are definitely a team uh, not to be looked over, the Moore Park Raiders women's volleyball team, if you're able, ever able to catch a game, we actually have a game coming up next Wednesday. Make sure you check it out. But the Moore Park women's volleyball team, definitely a great team coached by Adam Black coming up with a victory against Santa Barbara City College. We saw Darius right there almost jump the same exact route they ran with Vinny before that out route. It's so risky because if if he misses, obviously, he, you know, you're going to get a nice first down or maybe a touchdown. But if you jump that route, that's almost always a guaranteed pick six. Darling on a second down and 10. He is trying to march forward to the line of scrimmage, but brought down just one yard shy on the sack. Yeah, and this defensive line has been getting to Tanner Darling a lot tonight. So let's see if that the offense has got to work on, you know, getting those blocks and watching those switches that they run a lot. The Cougars were trying to, I guess you could say, catch the ref slipping because they, they they were trying to say that Tanner Darling fumbled the football. We actually had even number 46, Iwuchukwu, was out on the football down on the ground, so he was trying to get the ball back for the Cougars. But now on a third down and 11, the pass is going to be incomplete. Intended for William Boucher, Tanner Darling hit immediately, actually by Iwuchukwu, coming up with the big-time hit against Tanner Darling as he threw the incomplete pass. That Iwo Chuka right there, that fumbled snap, they got to work on that. Every every second is crucial in a play, and you saw right there, if he doesn't fumble that snap, he has enough time to roll out, roll out in the pocket and maybe complete a pass. But since he fumbled it, you know, having to give a couple seconds there, fumbling and getting the ball in his hand, they gave Iwo Chuka enough time to come around the edge there and get the sack, or uh, cause an incomplete pass, pardon me. It's now, of course, going to be a fourth down and 11. Obvious punting situation out here for the Moore Park Raiders. No doubt about it that they're going to be punting on this one. It's going to be a high deep punt all the way back to the 35 is where it hits. A block in the back by the Cougars, not called by the refs, unfortunately. Mark Martin able to down it at the 32-yard line. Yeah, that was an obvious penalty right there. I don't know why they didn't see that, but yeah, block in the back. That would have 
that would have caught Yez another problem in in their drive right here. You see for the Cougars, blocking the back, usually about a 15-yard penalty there. Mm -hmm. Wasn't caught right there that time, but mental mistakes really hurt this Cougar team. Right now they are winning, but, you know, if Moore Park starts capitalizing more often on these mistakes that they're making, it's going to cost them the game. It's now going to be a first down and 10, a first down and 10 ball on their own 32-yard line for the Cougars coming out here for another drive. Able to score three touchdowns so far, two rushing touchdowns and one passing touchdown here for College of the Canyon. 640 left in the first half. Still a 27 lead against the Raiders. Drawing back to pass, Brito looking deep down the field and it's going to be incomplete. It looked like Hayden Galvin was the intended wide receiver because he had a bite on the receiver, RB Marlowe. I mean, Hayden Galvin covered that perfectly. We have saw how fast Marlowe is tonight, but Hayden, just as quick, probably one of their best. Even though he's a safety, he can definitely be a corner there and cover one, any of your receivers on any given team. Hayden, great job right there. Left no space for the ball to be thrown, and that's why you saw the QB kind of just overthrow it because he knew if he would have put it right on the money, Hayden would have picked that off. It's now going to be a second down and 10. Usual formation we've seen out here for the Cougars. Dropping back to pass. Brito has nowhere to go. He's rolling out. He's growing up the middle. He is not sliding down either, and the Moore Park Raiders put a big hit on him. Yeah, and that's costly right there. Sometimes these quarterbacks try to make a point saying that they're not scared to take a hit, but you never know, especially a guy like Brito, one of the smaller quarterbacks we've seen. He takes one too many hits. He's done for the game. You got a backup QB, and we got a whole new ball game going on right there. So the smartest thing to do is always you should always slide, especially you're being a starter mm -hmm. on such a good team like the Cougars. Very costly if you injure yourself. You know, they're going to hurt your team. You're not making any points, really. That's usually the smarter thing to do, always slide. Andrew Brito, 5'10", 170 pounds. Brito's looking brittle out there. Now 6.05 left in the first half. It's going to be a handoff, and he's going to be brought down to look like by himself. Yeah, tripped up over his own feet. You saw that daylight right there. So that open gap started to run too fast, tripped over himself. That happens sometimes, too, just like receivers get all anti and anticipate and get all excited when they see, you know, a wide open ball, no one around them, and you'll see these drops. Just happen same thing happens with the running backs. They'll hit the corner, and they'll see all this open space. They get so excited. They lose their balance sometimes, just slip and fall. And, you know, Moorpar got lucky right there. That would have been a first down, definitely, if he would have stayed on his feet. Jalen Logan, number 26, was the running back on the play, breaking his own ankles. 5.30 left in the first half. Drawn back to pass, thrown on his back foot. It was a screen play to R.B. Marlowe, but unable to get it to him. And that screen play almost worked. You saw that pressure coming off the edge right there, which actually caused the incomplete pass. But if they come any slower, he gets it off any quicker, that's going to go for first down. You saw the guards and tackles already pulling out of the way. They, he had blockers. Nobody was even around Marlowe. But... Fortunately for Moore Park defense, he was overthrown there, and he wasn't able to turn upfield and get the first down. So a great job we're seeing out here from the Raider defense, coming up with some big-time plays, now forcing a third down and 11. Big-time third down conversion right here. Defense has to step up big time. Stepping up in the pocket, and he's going to be brought down with the sack. Great job by the Moore Park Raiders. Coming up with the crucial sack on a third down and 11. Great job right there with that Moore Park defense getting the sack getting that three and out going, and now we're going to see this offense come back on there and make another play. Courtney Chandler, number 18, just slicing and dicing through the offensive line, coming up with the big-time sack. That's a statement play right there for the Moore Park Raiders, and right now we have Vinny Corso, the electrifying return man, number 20. Imagine a sack and then a punt return for a touchdown. I mean, nothing could get better than that. Vinny Corso, definitely a great return man for the Moore Park Raiders. Oh, definitely. One of the best players on their team, hands down. It's going to be a deep punt, so no return possible. It's actually going to bounce. It looks like it takes a pretty good Cougar bounce and is going to stay in bounce inside the 15-yard line, place of the 12. Yeah, and you saw Vinny right there. That's like he had the ball. That Sometimes punt returners will do that kind of just to fake out that mm -hmm. that punt team because when they see that, they don't, they'll they all focus in on someone like Vinny who they know is a threat and they'll lose attention of where the actual ball is going. And the reason they do that is so that people don't run down the field and try and stop the ball before it goes in the end zone so they can pin them more when – Punt returners do that. What they're trying to do is cause distraction so that nobody pays attention to where the ball's going and they don't they aren't able to sometimes they'll let it roll into the end zone so they can get that touchback. Too bad there it looked like there was a backspin on it, so it was able to just 
hit the ground and bounce right back up. It's going to be a handoff to Mark Martin pushing forward. I mean, he's yelling weight room through that whole entire scruffle. I mean, great job right there by Mark Martin, able to get about a gain of, it looks like about a gain of six to seven on the on the rush. Yeah, Mark Martin right there driving his feet, able to get, you know, six, seven yards right there. There's a reason why this kid plays a lot on this Moore Park offense. Yeah, that is a big reason. I mean, he's a big guy out there. The handoff's going to go straight to him once again. Push it forward, deep through the middle, down at the 30-yard line. Great job right there by Mark Martin. Nice vision, too, seeing that cutting back right before that tackle was able to come and take him down. You saw him watch. Was patient. One of the most key things about running backs is patience. You saw him patiently wait. You saw that DB come and miss the tackle, and he's able to cut it up for a first down. Hey, he was like Curtis Jackson, 50 cent out there, patiently waiting. Definitely. Now going to be a handoff once again to Mark Martin. Mark Martin, he's going to be brought down for another big gain, a six-yard gain. I mean, Mark Martin, you cannot slow this man down right now. Yeah, and sometimes you'll see when offenses are having a lot of success, they'll literally just keep going right back to the same play and the same player because they know the defense can't stop it. And that's what Moore Park seems to be doing now, running a lot of run plays with Mark Martin, who they have just taken out to give a short breath to. But that's a good job right there by that offense that keeps driving. Now in a second down four, it's going to be a pass out of the flats to Vinny Corso. Incomplete pass, led him a little too far. you got to be careful sometimes leading your receivers like that. That can either end in an interception or sometimes even worse, end in getting your player killed and end up him being done for the rest of the game. You see a lot of injuries happen when players get led on swing routes. You know, concussions come, so they got to be – quarterbacks got to be careful when they're throwing that pass. It also looked like number three was right there to make a big hit or even intercept it. That was Justin Dennison that made a nice play. It's going to be a third and four, a handoff to Mark Martin. It's actually going to be a handoff to Desmond Davis. Desmond Davis, number two on the far sideline, breaking some tackles, pushing defenders all the way to the 34-yard line. Great run right there. Desmond Davis, number two of the Raiders. And we haven't seen much of this, but we did right now. Davis out here in the open. Once he once he breaks a tackle or two, he's able to he's able to pick up a huge gain right there, hitting on those boosties and picking up forty. Sorry, pardon me, about twenty five yards on that carry right there. That was a thirty one yard carry. Great job right there by Desmond Davis. It's going to be a must snap in between the legs of Darling. Great move by him, however, to just dive on the football, not trying to make a play out of it. Yeah, they got to work on those snaps. We've seen throughout the year them having trouble with that center and the snap, and we've seen the multiple fumbles this year between the two of them, so he's got to get that down. Plays like that are very costly. Now you're automatically got to come out and start throwing the ball deep just to make up for that huge loss, just to get back to the line of scrimmage. That was about a 10-yard loss right there. It's going to set up a second down and 20. Excuse me, a second down and 21. It was an 11-yard loss, so Darling still in the shotgun position. Of course, not the greatest field position, as you saw what they had previously. The rush is coming, and an incomplete pass to Desmond Davis straight to the middle, and Darling definitely took a big licking on that one. And I actually like the play call there. They, everyone thought they were going deep. They were just ran a screen right there. He just wasn't able to hold on to it. Yeah, and it looked like it hit Desmond Davis. I mean, we also had uh, number 30 was there, Brandon Hattori of the defense. He was right there for the tackle if Davis caught it. But Davis, he could have had that reception right there. It was a pretty nice pass. It hit him right in the numbers, right in the hands Definitely, as well. Yeah, got to got to get a hold of those. It's now going to be a third down and 21, about 2.15 left in the first half. 27 score still stands. Cougars in the lead. Darling trying to make something happen. Pass it deep down the field, but it's going to be incomplete. Nico Lima, number eight, the intended receiver, right around the 20-yard line. Yeah, you got to be careful right there throwing into a sea of dark blue. That's most often when interceptions occur right there. Darling's got to be more careful. If anything, just keep or throw it away. You don't want to force something that's not there and cause a turnover for your offense. That was pretty nice, a sea of dark blue. Yeah, very vivid right there. I'm trying to paint a picture for the – for the viewers that are already watching. Exactly. Now it's going to be a fourth down and 21. About two, about 210 left in the first half. Raiders unable to come up with a score on back-to-back -back possessions. Some great field position on back-to-back -back possessions, though. And they were able to march down the field. is just unable to capitalize on that, on that great drive. It's going to be a high, booming punt. Recovered inside the 10 and going to bring him down right away. Great job right there by the special teams of the Raiders. Nice hit right there, dropping his shoulder. Clean hit, too, and making that punt returner pay for trying to run it out. A lot of times when it's a short field position, you'll see almost always the smart thing to do is, is uh, fair catch it. But right there, you saw him trying to make something out of nothing, and that's what caused him to get lit, lit up right there. Brandon Pierce, number nine, was the return man. And 
I mean, I don't know why he just didn't call for a fair catch because he knew he was going to get lit up right there, but he just wanted to take the hit, I guess. Yeah, he was trying to. He was probably trying to create a little bit better field position, knowing he was going to catch it about the eight yard line. So now it's going to be a first down and ten, ball at the eight yard line, their own eight yard line. It's going to be a four wide receiver slot. Uh, excuse me, four wide receiver set. Run around in the end zone, a dangerous place. He has to let it fly, and he gets. Knocked down big time. It's going to be an incomplete pass. Almost caught right there by number 11, Jaron Pierce. Great play right there. You saw both from the defensive line right there and from the secondary. Great play. He made him pay right there for throwing that ball. And you saw Hayden almost come away with that turnover, but wasn't able to stay in balance or so hold on to it. There is a personal foul. It's going to be roughing the passer against the defense, but, I mean, it didn't look like that was an illegal hit. It looked like... The quarterback, Brito, had the football in his hands, and when he made the hit, he didn't wrap him up and bring him down. He just hit him and was able to bring him down. He didn't wrap him up, which that's usually what it's called. He tried to stop his momentum, but when you're running after a quarterback and you're going to lay him out and he throws the football maybe one millisecond before you hit him, that shouldn't be a penalty. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's lame how these rules have changed so much and they try to make everything so soft now. I mean, how, how are you going to tell a – 250 pound lineman is not hit a quarterback when he's going full speed and they the rule is it's after two feet they usually should call it but mm -hmm. he was going he was it was maybe a foot he took in between those throws right there and great job right there by the more part defense they did step off sides however as you saw number 31 norio thomas get a little antsy on the play try to he, he tried to anticipate the the snap count right, but right. he was caught off sides but still going back to that that was a great job by the more park defense right inside the end zone almost coming up with a safety but unfortunately it was called for a penalty it's now going to be a first down and five off the offsides penalty against the raiders right you got to be careful with those canyons on a first down and five is going to be a first down pass they want to make a nice move around the defense now on the far side on another juke move now past the 50 into raider territory that was number nine once again brandon pierce yeah, nice play right there, moving the moving the ball. Let's see this defense, you know, bend but don't break here. If anything, just give up the field goal. You don't want them. To, you don't want them to score right before the half. And they do receive second half, correct, Ryan? This Cougar. This yes, Cougar. the Cougars so are going want, to be receiving exactly, the football. You don't want them to put up a po some points and then get the ball second half too, just to start off the second half. Now John back to pass on the first down and ten on an out route. The pass is complete and he's going to be brought down this time. Brandon Pierce with a reception, but as, excuse me, that's actually number eight with a reception to Sean Holmes, but Brandon Pierce on the last catch, he's actually now out. He's listed as defensive back, but also used as a wide receiver. He was that that guy that got uh, the reception, and it seemed like the Raiders just couldn't bring him down. There is going to be a timeout on the field, however, but it looks like the tackling, sometimes it's on point. Sometimes it's like we're tackling everybody, but sometimes it seems like we're just slipping through. It looks like we're trying to tackle on the upper body instead of the lower body sometimes. Right, right, yeah, and you always want, they always talk about, you know, watching the waist. When we actually saw right there by number 15, uh, Durden right there breaking down and not letting them get a good gain, but yeah, sometimes you can see these high tackles, and that's why these Everyone in this level is, you know, big and strong, so they can break these high tackles left and right. But, you know, you take out their waist, that's how your whole body, that's where your whole movement's at. So you take out their waist, they can't go anywhere. So that's why everyone always talks about wrapping up and aiming for that waist because you stop, you stop the lower part of their body, obviously they can't go anywhere. But you hit them up top, they can break a tackle, stiff arm you, mm -hmm. truck you, and keep on moving. So a lot of the great tacklers in this league and NFL and all levels, you know, always aim for that waist and stop the carrier from – continuing to run now coming out with a second down and one on the far sideline Lazarek and Pierce are the receivers now we've got a shotgun position looking on that far sideline pass deep down the middle nobody is near him it's going to be a touchdown for the Cougars coming up with a big time touchdown reception that was Brandon Pierce number nine coming up with that one Pierce has been making a lot of plays this drive here. You know, they you saw right there that that defense was in man coverage. They they saw a mismatch there with Hayden and Pierce, and they they went for it. They just ran on a straight streak route, and Hayden couldn't keep up, and that's how they were able to capitalize on that. You'll see that a lot of times when they just see a mismatch in speed. You'll see an offense attack a certain player just so they can they because they can see they have they can have success with it. So that's what they did right there. PAT attempt is up. 
And it looks like it's no good. Another missed PAT attempt. I mean, wow, we're seeing a lot of missed kicks here. But the Cougars, after that touchdown, they are going to be winning so far 26-7 to ahead in this matchup. You know, and more park here. Got a minute 04 left. Definitely has, definitely has some time here. They got two timeouts as well. So they definitely have time to get some points on the board. They need to at least get a field goal to make this back to a two-possession game. You know, even though three points is only three points, if they bring this down at uh, 26 to 10, that's a two-possession game, and that's why those those extra points are so key because now that they've missed both of them, if they're able to get a field goal on this drive, at, at least a field goal on this drive, that brings it down to 26 to 10, and that's a, even though it seems like a weird score, that's still a two-possession game if they can convert on both those two-point conversions. So people always think, like, oh, it's just an extra point, but after missing two in a row and looking at the score here, if they get a field goal, this is a two-possession game, and Moore Park's still in, still in business here. Yes, Moore Park is definitely still in business here, especially if they get another nice return to set them up with some great field position. As we've seen all game tonight, they have been getting past the 30-yard line on almost every single return. So, of course, your usual suspects, Vinny Corso, Desmond Davis back there to receive the kick. Tawan Funch is also there. They're actually going to go for basically looking like a squib-type kick. It's going to be recovered by Tawan Funches, but he is going to be brought down right around the 25-yard line by the Cougars. And they saw that kickoff team right there just swarm around the ball carrier. They always talk about staying in your lanes and breaking down about five yards before you get to that ball carrier, not letting him get outside or make any plays, and that's what that kickoff team did right there. They definitely listened to LeVar Ball right there with stay in your lane. <laughs> now coming out with a first down and 10 for the Moore Park Raiders. Ball is going to be played at the 25-yard line. Down by 19 right now with just about a minute left in the first half. Yeah, let's see if they can get a if I'm the if I'm the Moore Park offense right now, I'm just throwing all pass plays right here, just trying to get into field goal range to get three points on the board here. Keep the momentum going going into halftime. Karen Prentice Brown, Lorenzo Berardi on the near sideline, your wide receivers right here at the bottom of your screen. The ball snapped. Darling. Looks, Cameron Prentice Brown with the reception right around the 31 yard line is going to be a six yard gain and steps out of bounds to save clock. Yeah, and you'll see them probably doing a lot of this this drive, just doing a lot of passes that'll get them out of bounds, a lot of post corners and quick outs just so that they can not have to burn their timeouts till they absolutely need them. Now with the second down and four, second down and four, ball at the 31 yard line, trying to make a drive out of it with 57 seconds left. Took four seconds off the clock on that last pass play. Lorenzo Berardi, intended receiver, an incomplete pass thrown in double coverage. A little bit of a a, a risky pass right there, if yeah. I say so myself. And that's Darling right there trying to trying to force one of those plays to happen. You don't always need to do that. Throw it away if you have to. I do know that there's not a lot of time left on the clock, but you know you'd rather punt it or you know run the clock out instead of uh, have another turnover and give the Cougars yet another chance to score. It's going to be a handoff straight to the middle, making some nice moves right here, a spin move. Mark Martin getting past the 45-yard line, a first down for the Raiders. 44 seconds left, most likely going to call a timeout. And you'll see a lot of times, too, when you can see that the offense doesn't have much with them. They'll just try to run the ball to run the clock out. But if they do pick up the first down while doing that, obviously that will keep the drive alive and they're able to go back to pass plays. No huddle offense. Handoff once again, Mark Martin straight up the middle, just pushing forward past the 50-yard line, now down to the 49, inside Cougar territory. They are going to be calling a timeout right now. As you see, Coach Mike Stewart already on the field, making sure that they stop the clock as soon as possible. It looks like they're going to have right around 28 seconds left, just under 30 seconds left to run a few more plays, hopefully, and get in some better field position. But already at the 49-yard line of the Cougars, already inside Cougar territory. I mean, this is a great drive that they're putting together so far. Oh, definitely, definitely. And you can see them, like, they're using these timeouts conservatively, but when you get stopped, when you have a run stopped in the middle of the field, they're obviously going to need to kill a timeout there. But you'll probably see them go back to a lot more pass plays or a couple more pass plays in these next 30 seconds here, just trying to pick up a couple more yards and hopefully use the sideline to their advantage here, saving clock, like you said earlier, and able to just keep this drive alive while stopping the clock at the same time. What I'd like to see is I'd like to see one of the receivers go on a streak route, one of those go routes, maybe go uh, run a route maybe about 10 yards, fake a hitch, fake one of those comeback routes, put your hands up, and then run right around the cornerback, run right around the defensive back, do that double move, they call it, and make sure that you're able to get wide open because they're going to be 
they're, they're going to basically be assuming that you're going to go for the short pass play. So if you have one of those double move go routes, you're going to have wide open pass. Definitely something like a slug go route where you have a slant and you turn it into a go route. Darling has nowhere to go. He rolls out to the near side lane. He's just going to take it himself, and he's going to run out of bounds right around the 40-yard line. They're going to call him out the 41, but he gets out of bounds. That's the most important thing, so they are able to save their one timeout. With only one final timeout, you don't want to take it with 20 seconds left. Definitely. You want to save that for probably your field goal or final play of the drive, which hopefully will be a touchdown. But if not, you want to save that for a field goal if they can get in that range. Now with a first down and 10, a first down and 10, ball at the 41-yard line inside Cougar territory, making some great drives in this game and another one right now. They are going to hand it off. Interesting enough, Desmond Davis able to get out of the tackle, and he's pushed forward. He's pushed forward about five yards. I mean, the big boy just pushes him forward. That's Dorian Gerald. There is an injury down in the field, and that should be an injury timeout. So interesting to see if they're going to be calling it a more Park Raider timeout, but he is able to get up, so it will be a more Park Raider timeout. So they're going to use the last of their timeouts right now. I'm surprised they didn't want to save it till you know, maybe a field goal or something. But he actually was tackled in the middle of the field, so they have to burn it. So let's see right here what Moore Park tries to do. Maybe hit a quick out route or something just to get, you know, if they get another about 10 yards here, they'll definitely be in field goal range. So let's see if Moore Park can get that done. Yes, hopefully we will we'll be able to get it done. It's going to be a second down. Looks like score board is having a little bit of trouble there were 10 seconds left when they called the timeout now there's only 1.3 i think that's a little bit wrong right there so hopefully they're able to fix that and make sure that the raiders have the time that they duly need but coming out here with the second down it looks like it's going to be about a second down and seven hopefully they're able to put together something because right now this is going to be a very deep field goal for riley oh, garrett definitely this he is, is yeah th this is one that not not even a kicker with the biggest leg could most likely knock down. I mean, you got to – there's only about five of those kickers in the NFL sprinkle around that could hit about a 50 to 60-yard field goal kick. Definitely. And, I mean, that, even that's not guaranteed. So, they're definitely going to have to get a couple – maybe I would get one more play here. They got Now the clock's saying 13.3 seconds. So, if they can get a quick play in real quick, able to spike the ball and set them up for a field goal. If exactly. They if they can't get out of bounds. Exactly. You're saying spike the ball. Exactly. If they're not able to get out of bounds, no timeouts left. They need to stop the clock somehow. So now John back to pass. They have a few out routes and a nice double move right there, but it's incomplete. It looks like Vinny Corso was the intended wide receiver. A very, a very well, uh, uh, he, he like ran that route to perfection. That was a very well ran route, but unable to feed him. Yeah, definitely. And I'm, Tanner, a little high, but Tanner put it in a good spot. I don't know why Vinny would put only one hand up there. Got to be more conservative with those kind of catches. You know, put both your hands up and, and secure the catch. And he would have fallen out of bounds. So I don't really know what was going on right there, but we'll, we'll figure it out. You know, eight seconds left in the game here. If I'm, if I'm this offense here, I'm going to try and hit a quick, probably a quick out route or something that will give me just enough reach to get into field goal range third and seven they are going for the out route it is pass completed lorenzo berardi past the 30 yard line he's going to be placed down at the 28 yard line four seconds left it looks like they have just enough room for riley garrett i was watching him and we were actually all watching him uh he was having the ball placed at the 40 yard line and nail nailing those kicks in pregame so that's a 50 yard field goal kick he only has to kick it looks like it's going to be right around a 45 yarder Right, and we saw him make this last week, so we've seen him that he, can, he has the capability of doing it. Let's see if he can come in huge right now for his team and strike this one in here. Riley Garrett definitely has enough leg on this one. We did see about a 30-yard field goal kick he attempted earlier on in this game, and he shanked it. So hopefully he's able to nail this one as there is going to be a timeout on the field, a timeout by the Cougars. That's actually both the team's last timeout, so with only four seconds left, this will be the last play of the first half. Hopefully the Raiders can get those double digits in the first half. Of course, we saw last week they were shut out in the first half but able to put 10 points in the second half. Hopefully we're able to get the 10 points in the first half and not have a half where we lay a goose egg just like we did the past few games. Right, right, right. Yeah, you definitely want to get more points on the board here and come away with this W. But it's crazy you say you say this the last play of the game. It's as crazy as it is, sometimes this clock can be your enemy or your best friend depending on what side of football you're on. You know, if this kick actually comes away too quick there could be a quarter of a second left on the clock because four seconds is just enough time to you know make it so that there could be another play but hopefully this will be the last play of the game because it is a 45 yarder and 
it's a lot farther away. If this is a lot closer kick, then, you know, we'd have a different story here. But because it's far enough away, I think that you're right. This should be the last play of the game here. So now Riley Garrett, number 99, trying to knock down his second 45-yarder of the season and second of his career, 45 yards. Remember, being his longest kick in his whole career that he's nailed. Here comes the kick. It looks like it has enough leg to it, and he's going to nail it. Wow, great job, Riley Garrett, number 99, putting the team on his back two straight weeks, knocking down two back-to-back 45-yarders. -back and that was super clutch right there, Ryan. We saw him knocking that one down. It almost was tipped, too, but he got off in just enough time there to make this a two-possession game. I mean, 16 points, you get a couple touchdowns and convert on those two-point conversions, and you got a tie ball game right now, right? This is a lot closer game than, than I think people expected. Yes, it is a much closer game, and now it's going to be the end of the second quarter of action. So now we got halftime. At halftime, the score is 26 to 10. College of the Canyon Cougars winning in this matchup against the Moore Park Raiders by 16 points. We'll be back with second quarter coverage, excuse me, in third quarter coverage and second half coverage in just a bit. We're just going to have a few messages from our sponsors and make sure that you enjoy halftime. But once again, we'll be back with third quarter coverage in just a bit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Moore Park Raider live stream. Your coverage of Moore Park Raider football. Ryan Ketchum, play-by-play -play commentator. Nick Federico, color commentator analyst. Alongside Cole Legley, our cameraman, we're here at College of the Canyons, home of the Cougars. The Cougars have a 26-10 to lead against the Moore Park Raiders, entering the third quarter of play, and they're going to be getting the football to start this second half. Yeah, I expect a lot more, even more explosive offense from the Moore Park Raiders here. Moore Park. Kicking it short, recovered at the 25-yard line. A big-time hit occurred at the 25 as well, able to bring it all the way back to about the 20, excuse me, the 30-yard line. That's where the Cougars are going to be starting it off. Short kick, but it's going to put them in good field position here for the Cougars here, starting their drive at a nice 30-yard line. I expect a lot of explosion coming out of this opening drive right here from the Cougars. A couple passes, mix it with the run, keep it a balance in the beginning, keep that defense uh, safe. Andrew Brito coming out with the Cougar offense on a first down and 10 ball at the 30-yard line, their own 30-yard line. We got a four wide receiver set, two in the slot, balanced on both sidelines. The usual suspects out here for the Cougars at the wide receiver's position. We got Brito. He's going to be in the shotgun formation, dropping back to pass, has nowhere to go. Steps up in the pocket, looks deep down the field on the far sideline, a little bit pushing and shoving, but he has the catch. He brings it down past the 10-yard line, deep inside the red zone. A big-time play for the Cougars. As I did say, there was some pushing and shoving down there, but no penalties are called. Yeah, Brito has a cannon for just being 5'10". He's got so much power behind him that people wouldn't expect it. He just launched that one right there. Yeah, you did see some pushing and shoving. No defensive pass interference was called right there. But great catch, and that was a huge pickup. Those are the kind of plays I was talking about that we'll be seeing there. That moves him all the way inside the 10-yard line right there, and that was a great play right there by Brutal. Number 80, Leroy DeShazer actually able to come up with that big-time reception. He has two touchdowns on the season. Brito rolling out to the far sideline, trying to pass it to DeShazer once again. No penalty flag. It's incomplete, but that was on a first down and goal. Yeah, and they got to be careful there with Brito. He's so fast. He can get outside, and he saw them start to cause pressure, so he had to throw it away. But a couple more seconds right there. That was a good job by the defense. They were closing in that gap before he could get it out to the corner and put it up for six. Now coming out, it's a sec excuse me, it's going to be a second down and goal ball at the seven yard line. Brito was trying to look for DeShazer once again, and as we mentioned, he already has two touchdowns on the season, so definitely used it in the red zone. We got a man in motion, that's RB Marlowe. He's going to pass it to him. Almost looks like a reverse pass, so he is able to actually get down to the six yard line, so about a gain of one, but. As I just said, that was almost like a lateral type pass, it looked like. Oh, yeah. Have you seen them do that a couple of times now with RB? Running those swing passes, and, and almost it's almost like a screen pretty much. They have him do a swing pass, and they, they set up in a trio set, and all the receivers just do a pretty good job of blocking there. But that was a good job of Hayden cracking down there and getting him by the foot before he could break it for a touchdown right there. Great job going on right there. No, third down and goal coming up at the six-yard line. Drawing back to pass, looking for DeShazer. He has him in the back corner of the end zone, but it's going to be incomplete. Great play right there by the Moore Park Raiders coming up with the big-time coverage on number 80 right there, Leroy DeShazer. He's a 6'2", 193-pound receiver. 
Good job right there by that Moore Park defense. Benny but not breaking. Coming up there with that huge stop on third down. Forcing a fourth down right here, and they're going to go for that PAT right there. That keeps, or pardon me, that field goal. That'll keep Moore Park in the game definitely and, you know, maybe use this momentum to come back on this, dri on this next drive here and put some more points on the board. Yes, great job right there by the Moore Park defense, making sure they don't give up that touchdown, even though they had a great field position off of that big-time pass to DeShazer. It's going to be a field goal kick. It looks like he shanked it left. Great job right there. It looks like each time that this kicker kicks the football, whether it be a PAT attempt, whether it be just a regular field goal kick as we saw right now, it seems like he shanks every single one. Yeah, and then Moore Park there, that's what, exactly what I'm talking about with Benny not breaking. You know, a, unlike a touchdown, obviously, that's guaranteed six points, but a field goal try, you don't know what's going to happen there. So they caught a nice break there. Great job by them not giving up the touchdown, and they're coming away right there with giving up zero points. Got the momentum on their side, and let's see if this offense can keep doing what they did at the end of the last half and start driving and put up put up a touchdown right here with that two-point conversion, and they're one, when they're one score out of this game, right? Exactly. They could get within one score, as you were saying. Vinny Corso, number 20. Cameron Prentice-Brown, number 18, out here as wide receivers. But with just about a minute and a half left, just about one and a half, excuse me, one and a half minutes taken off of the clock in the third quarter, the Raiders already have the football. There is going to be a timeout against the Moore Park Raiders. So while we have another break in action, we're going to thank a few more of our sponsors. Once again, we cannot do without you. So thank you very much for sponsoring the Moore Park Raider live stream. U.S. Army, go on business trips with a company like no other. U.S. Army, Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. Wells Fargo, UCLA Health, it begins with you. UCLA Health and Moore Park Center for Dentistry. We care about our community as much as you do at Moore Park Center for Dentistry. But now, as I said, just about one and a half minutes taken off the clock, three, excuse me, about 13, 30 left in the third quarter. Raiders have the football, and as you mentioned, they have momentum with that missed field goal kick by the Cougars. Definitely, definitely. And it looked like there was some confusion right there, not having enough men on the field, so they had to use a timeout, which is very costly. But, you know, you'd rather, you'd rather be safe than sorry. They probably had to readjust the play there and figure it out. Fake handoff play action pass incomplete. There it looks like the penalty flag thrown down on the field, but it is going to be an incomplete pass. Yeah, and you saw right there they were trying to get that one-on-one -on -one type matchup there with the screen of Vinny and would have left him right there with the DB if his other receiver would have picked up that block. So what they're trying to do is just keep Vinny in open space because we all know how deadly he is when he gets out there in the open. So shifty and quick, you know, he breaks one tackle, he's going to put up six points right there. Unfortunate enough for the offense, it was an illegal block. It was a chop block. They're calling it against the Moore Park Raiders. Half the distance to the goal, so they're going to back up 10 yards all the way to the 10-yard line. So now setting up with a first down and 20. And that's what I was talking about with, that, with cutting. I mean, it, it's really bad. It, it really can affect your offense, and, you know, those penalties are so costly just because of one the way you block somebody. It's going to be a handoff going straight out the middle, trying to power through all the way down to the 15-yard line. Gains about, I would say, actually six yards is going to be placed at the 16-yard line. Mark Martin, number five, coming up with a big-time carry. Martin has been carrying this entire team. Well, not this entire team, but Martin's been carrying a lot of the, the running load for this offense. I mean, he, the first half alone, he had great numbers, putting up you know almost 50, 50 yards on uh, five carries, so... Martin's been doing what he's done all year, and that's just being the workhorse and, you know, picking up these nice chunks of yards here and there. 12.50 left in the third quarter. A second down and 14 coming up. It's going to be a fake handoff. Play action pass is going to be to Vinny Corso. Vinny Corso having a blocker in front of him, able to get down all the way to the 24-yard line, setting up a pretty easy third down, at least a lot more manageable than what they would have had if they would have kept that loss of yards. Definitely, and you see them come back to that play they wanted to run earlier with Vinny on first down, but this time it actually worked. He was able to catch, so there was no flags on the play. And like I was talking about, he just picked up another, you know, eight yards right there, just getting, getting a little bit of space. You give him a little bit of space, and he's able to make a big gain out of it. It's going to be a third down and seven, a third down and seven ball at the 26-yard line out here for the Moore Park Raiders. Darling is going to be in the shotgun formation. Watch out for Vinny Corso, Vincent Corso on the near sideline. 
Draws it back to pass. Stepping up in the pocket. Has nowhere to go. Vinny with the block. Trying to make something out of nothing. Diving forward. It looks like he has enough for the first down. Great job right there by Tanner Darling. And like you're talking about, you don't always want to see your quarterback use their body, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get that first down. So that was a great job. Heads up play right there by Darlin, seeing that he only had a yard to go and throwing his body literally to get that first down. Great job also, too, by Vinny, seeing that Darlin out here scrambling around, and that's what you got to do. As soon as you see the play has been uh, abandoned, you go and pick up somebody and make a block. So that helps free Darlin for an extra couple yards right there for that first down. Now first down and 10 coming up, ball at the – 31 yard line it's going to be a handoff straight of the middle trying to make a move past the 40 yard line there we go great run right there by Desmond Davis number two for a first down and more parks very lucky with multiple running backs here they can run the ball to you know they can they can attack you in so many different ways they got Davis who's been carrying a lot of the workload too along with Martin and these two are so both so quick but they're very different too Martin's more of a kind of go at you guy make one move and go and Davis is just like break left and right and you know he's able to just pick up all these yards just being more of a evading kind of runner now on another first down and 10 is going to be a fake handoff play action pass to Vinny Corso a little bit of a late hit right there but no penalty flag just knocking him out of bounds right around the 50 yard line but as you were saying about the running back situation Mark Martin Desmond Davis great running backs but we also have some uh, amazing running backs on the bench as well, including Raymond Thomas, number 25, and Anthony McLean, number 28, who are both returning from last year's team. So we have just a great running back set over here at Moore Park College, so we can basically use anybody and make some success out of it. Oh, definitely. And we've even seen uh, you know, Edge and Baddock come in a couple of times, mm -hmm. too, and carry the load. So, you know, you're right. They have actually five different running backs that they can rely on. It's going to be a handoff to Desmond Davis, and they sniffed that one out. The Cougars knew exactly where that was going to go, and a big-time tackle right there by number 46, Noel Iwuchukwu, coming up with that tackle. And you also saw Dorian Gerald right there also getting in on that tackle, helping him out. He's been a big problem tonight that Moore Park seen, that hasn't seemed to have found an answer yet to, but, you know, if they can start locking him down a little bit more, holding those blocks a little bit longer, it'll create even more time and, success for this Moore Park offense as they continue to move down the field. Christian Graves, number 11. Cameron Prentice-Brown, number 81. Vinny Corso, number 20. Ryan Matlock, number 4, also out on the field. Your wide receiver core for the Moore Park Raiders. Looks like Matlock was a little bit confused, but looks like he is going to be down on the field. About 10-14 left in the third quarter. The score still stands 26-10. to College of the Canyon Cougars are ahead of the Moore Park Raiders right now by 16 points, but the Raiders putting together a nice drive. It's going to be a third down. It's going to be, a, it looks like a third down and six from the 47 yard line, their own 47. Darling draws back to pass, steps him in the pocket, rolls out. It's going to be a pass deep down the field. Ryan Matlock. It looks like it is going to be an incomplete pass, a little bit of extra contact, but no flags. That would have been an incredible catch right there. Hats off for him trying to make that play right there by Ryan Matlock. But like you saw right there, Tanner was pressured right there, had to throw it up. He actually did have some room to run it, but I think he was trying to, you know, be more safe about it and not have to use his body and just throw it up and try and make a play right there. But unfortunately, this drive's going to stop. Let's see if this defense can give this offense another chance here to get back on the field in a second. On a fourth down and six, they're going to be punting the football right now for the Moore Park Raiders. It's going to be a fake. Mark Martin gets the direct snap. He has blocking in front of him. He's going to take it down to the 40, down to the 30. He's going to be tackled right around the 25-yard line. Great fake right there by the Moore Park Raiders. Great job right there by Mark Martin again, being super aware, taking that fake snap right there. The Cougars obviously weren't expecting it at all. And twice tonight we've seen we've seen the coach do some – twice tonight we've seen the coach take a lot of risky plays, and they've paid off. I mean, both times we saw that onside kick earlier today, and – now he's going on that fake punt, and that's what you got to do if you want to win the game. you got to risk it all. And great job giving it to one of the stars on that offense, Mark Martin, who obviously can always get it done, picking up not just the first down but an extra 20 yards with it. We have seen that this season, even against Bakersfield last game, there was a fake punt that was actually taken for a first down. So Moore Park is very, very well versed at the fakes. It looks like a little extra contact. There should be a penalty flag for encroachment on the defense. No penalty flag thrown, so it's just going to be a nice gain for the Raiders able to run up there. It did look like, though, that the left end kind of tried to 
try to beat the snap count, but right anticipation right there, yeah, exactly. trying to jump that ball, but you saw that they got lucky that they didn't see that, but. Davis out here still making a nice play, picking up five yards regardless of what else was happening on that defensive line. This this running back core has really been picking up the slack here on this offense, and this seems becoming a lot more balanced. Second down and four, handoff to Davis. Davis cutting back in the middle. It looked like he had room on the outside, but cut back middle and was only able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Right, and I know we've just seen from the game as this, the game's developed, they're having a lot more success on these outside runs instead of trying to run it back inside. You know, you got these big guys like number 99, for the Cougars here, Dorian Gerald, who's 6'3", 270, you know, some monsters. Eric Banks, 94, 6'3", 270 also. And, you know, they got a lot of – they have a lot of big, solid dudes in the middle on that D-line. So they have a lot more success when they run outside because, they've, as you see, we have so much speed on this Moore Park offense that once they get outside, we're able to make a play. But when we try to run back to the middle where they have all these monsters, it's a lot harder to make something happen. On a third down, it's going to be a pass out of the flat. He's going to be brought down right away. Wow. Uh, nice nice play right there. He saw that swing pass coming out, and he was able to run run down open field tackle and lay a nice hit before he could get out there, before Davis could get out there and break it for a first down. Looks like they're going to go for it again. I mean, this coach has been taking a lot of risks tonight, and they've paid off. Hopefully they can do it one more time here. In a fourth down, they're going to be going for it with 7.30 left in the third quarter, still down by 16 points, just trying to get some points up on the board, not relying on the field goal kicks, even though Riley Guerra was able to nail a 45-yarder. There is going to be a timeout on the field, however, and a penalty flag is going to be thrown, most likely a sideline warning against the Moore Park bench. It looks like yeah. Coach Mike Stewart had a – it's going to be actually in sportsmanlike conduct. No warning right there. They're giving it right to Coach Mike Stewart. So it's going to be a penalty flag against the Raiders. And that's the absolute worst thing you can have happen. You're not even on the field, and you're still hurting your team. You know, there's a reason why you're not on the field when your team's on the field, and you need to respect that and not be making all these stupid comments and remarks that can literally hurt your team even when you're not on the field. So Moore Park's just got to settle down a little bit. Don't let their emotions get the best of them, and don't let it happen again. One thing I do like to see is that he has some passion. Coach Mike Stewart, he is a player. He actually played at Moore Park College as well. Just a little fun fact right there, along with at Westlake High School. was actually on USC's team before he transferred to Moore Park College and played at Fresno State where he started his coaching career. But he is definitely filled with passion. But as we do have a break in action, all these sponsors show passion for us here at Moore Park College. So we're thanking you for staying with us through this season and making us, making this whole thing possible. The lender you can call home, Penny Mac. Let us tackle all your mortgage needs. Penny Mac. DCH Auto Group, delivering customer happiness. DCH Auto Group. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide. Jersey Mike Subs, since 1956, a sub above. Jersey Mike Subs, and Los Robles Hospital Medical Center, well within reach. Los Robles Hospital Medical Center. And now that we're back at the action, they actually waved off the flag. No one sportsmanlike conduct penalty against Moore Park College. Mike Stewart was just, he, he said the right things. He didn't say the wrong things that would have caused a flag. So great job by Mike Stewart to be able to have that passion, but also hold it back just a little bit and make sure there's no penalty. It'll just be a timeout for Moore Park. Right, right. And you do see sometimes these refs do make mistakes. They'll call flags and take them back. And I think what coach did right there was he probably talked to the referee, you know, told him that he didn't mean it like that, and they were able to discuss it. And I think the ref probably gave him a warning and took back the flag for that. So that was a good job. Smart play by the coach there to fix what mistake happened. It's now going to be a fourth down and six, and they are going to be going for a field goal kick, about a 38-yard field goal attempt coming up here for Riley Garrett. Already knocked down a 45-yarder in the game, so definitely able to knock this one down. Yeah, well, you know, we've seen, you know, 48-yarder today, 45 last week. This should be walk in the park for him. Now a 38-yard field goal attempt. It's a line drive. It looks like it was just no good. There is a penalty flag, however. It looks like it was going to be called on the defense. They're a little bit upset right now. That's at least my first intuition. But just it, it seems like Riley Garrett, he can knock down these field goals at just sometimes just a little bit of inconsistency. But right, hopefully right. he'll be able to bounce back and knock down the next one. You know, and a lot of times people – 
are saying that it's the kicker too, but it's not always. Sometimes it's the holder of the snap. So the three of them just got to work on it a little bit more. But, you know, they definitely see it when everything goes right that they can take care of it. Great thing right here for the Moore Park Raiders. As we saw, it's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the defense. A big mistake right there by the Cougars because now the Moore Park Raiders have a first down half the distance to the goal. So great job right there. Now the Moore Park Raiders have the ball at the 11-yard line, knocking on the door of the end zone. And that's what I'm talking about. We've seen penalties throughout the night the Cougars keep, they, they keep causing. And like I was talking about, if Moore Park capitalizes on these penalties, you know, there can be a difference between the ball from a win and a loss in the ball game. And right now we've just seen they've given them even more life to this drive. So let's see if Moore Park can capitalize again. First down and 10, hand out to Mark Martin, straight to the middle, trying to brush those defenders off, able to get about a gain of one on the play. Yeah, not much they could do right there. That defensive line is so powerful. When they run up the middle, they don't have much success. They're a lot better at bet when they run it to the outside, we've noticed and seen throughout the game. But... Let's see if they continue to run in the middle or if they'll switch it up eventually. It's now going to be a second down and nine. Ball at the 10-yard line coming up here for the Raiders with 6.50 left in the third quarter. Still down by 16, but they're right there, right at the end zone. So they just need to be able to push this one in. It's actually going to be a second and eight ball at the nine. We got Vinny there on the bottom of the, bottom of the field right there. See if they're going to ISO him up, you know, hit him on another one of those quick out routes. And they are going to go to Vinny Corso on the – it's going to be a catch. It's going to be a touchdown reception. Vincent Corso, number 20, coming up with a big-time touchdown grab for the Moore Park Raiders. And this kid, time and time again, keeps coming up in the clutch for this Moore Park offense. I mean, right there, that was a beautiful throw by Darling, beautiful catch by Vinny. And you saw how they, there's a reason why they like to ISO him up there. No one can really guard this kid. Great play by the Moore Park offense right there. Vinny Corso, I mean, that was an amazing catch that was almost like a fade route he was just able to make a perfect pass right there and as you see Tanner Darling number 22 and the offense is still out on the field they're going to be going for a two-point conversion down by 10 trying to make it a one possession game Darling fake handoff quarterback is going to keep it. he's going to pass it deep in the end zone it's going to be incomplete it looked like there was just a little too much action going in the backfield Lorenzo Berardi was in the back of the end zone but just could not come up with a grab yeah unfortunately they weren't able to get it done there but if they would have that would have made this one possession game. But luckily, this is only a 10-point game here. I mean, they get one more touchdown and a field goal, and this is a tie game right here. I mean, this Moore Park offense is continuing to get better as this game's gone on. So, And this defense keeps holding that, keeps getting better as well. So let's see if they can get one more stop, or the defense can stop this, this powerful Cougar offense like they've been doing for most of the night and give this offense another run at it because I was very impressed how this last drive went for this Moore Park offense here. You know, we saw a nice balance of run and pass combination right there, and you know, that touchdown right there with Vinny Corzo at the end really s signified that drive right there and how much of uh, perfection was in it. Now just with about 6.30 left in the third quarter, the Moore Park Raiders just down by 10, 26-16 to 16 lead for the Cougars. But if you want to see more catches like that, like the Vinny Corso touchdown catch, make sure that you come out to the Citrus Cup. It's going to be next weekend, next Saturday night, October 28th at Moore Park College is going to be at Griffith Stadium, home of the Raiders, sponsored by DCH Auto Group, delivering customer happiness, especially the DCH Lexus of Oxnard. Thank you very much for sponsoring the game. Also sponsoring there at the Stitcher Cup is going to be Los Robles Hospital and Medical Center. They're handing out, <clears throat> excuse me, they're handing out pink footballs. Yes, pink footballs is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They're going to be handing out breast cancer awareness footballs. Last year, as we see an onside kick, there's actually going to be a penalty flag, however, most likely against the Moore Park Raiders. But as I was saying, they're going to be handing out pink footballs at the Citrus Cup next weekend, October 28th, next Saturday. The Moore Park Raiders versus Ventura Pirates. Make sure that you show up to that game so you can see more touchdown catches like that with the combination of Tanner Darling to Vincent Corso. And make sure after the game that you go to Custom Pie Pizza. Custom Pie Pizza, the best wood-baked pizzas in Ventura County. That's the Raider happy hour. There's going to be there's going to be many uh, deals over there. There's going to be deals on appetizers, on cheese, margarita pizza, beer, and wine. There's even wood-baked wings. They have some of the best wood-baked wings as well. I personally have had them each time that I've gone to Custom Pie. Just great wings, great pizza, great atmosphere. Make sure that you come out there after the Citrus Cup. So make sure go to the Citrus Cup and Custom Pie right after and support your Moore Park Raider football team. Yeah, great place to eat dinner after the game. Exactly. Remember, October 28th at Griffiths Stadium, home of the Moore Park Raiders. Make sure that you show up. 
Now, after the onside kick, there was an offside penalty against the kicking team against the Raiders, so it will put the Cougars in some great field position on a first down 10 at the 43. Now rolling outside the pocket, has nowhere to go. He's just going to pass it, and wow, it looks like a toe-touch catch right there. A great reception by number 13, Lazaric. Nice job there by Ethan Lazaric, all 5'10", 180 sophomore. Great job of him having good awareness right there, having his feet down right before he went out of bounds. That was a great job. Great heads-up play, too, by the QB, able to find him before throwing that ball away and keeping moving those chains. It's now going to be a first down and 10. There is a penalty flag. Looks like it's going to be a false start penalty against the offense with six minutes left in the third, still with a 10-point lead for the Cougars. College of the Canyons definitely getting a run for their money right now from the Moore Park Raiders. Moore Park definitely stepping up right now. Unfortunately, it will be an offside penalty against the defense against Moore Park, however. Yeah, and as we see the game go on, we've, we, always, we usually see a lot of mental errors start to come because you're so tired, your body's aching. You know, you've been, you've been battling all night, and so eventually, you, you know, you think you hear the snap count wrong, you jump off sides. Things like this happen a lot, but the better team will always persevere through this and figure out how to deal with this without giving up simple first downs and penalties like that. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the first time that the Raiders have had that mistake, so they have been the better team on that side as there actually is a handoff able to get it looks like right around the first down marker it looks like there's a Raider down the field but he just pushes himself up of course the Raiders they just brush themselves off no injury right there but that was RB Marlowe there on the carry yeah and you are right Ryan the Moore Park Raiders have only had one I'm pretty sure that is their first penalty of the night on the other side though the Cougars have been giving up countless mm -hmm. penalties which have literally cost them on the scoreboard they should have 28 points instead of 26 so but yes the Moore Park Raiders have been doing very disciplined it's gonna be a handoff off to the far sideline, Keelan White able to get a nice carry on the run on the ground right there. So now it's going to set up a first down 10 ball at the 13-yard line inside the red zone. And we see the Cougars, they like to get White on these outside runs here. We can just hit the corner and go. Good job by that War Park defense for just kind of swarming and cutting them off before we could try and turn it upfield right there. So now a first down and 10 at the 13. Don't be too surprised if they go to the receiver. There's only man coverage out here. Dropping back to pass. Show and blitz. They send the kitchen out there. He's going to run it. There is a penalty flag down on the field. It should be against the offense. But right now as it stands, it is a first down for the Cougars. They are probably going to call it back against College of the Canyons, however. And then is one problem you see when you run man coverage defense. The QB is the only player that's not accounted for when you're running the man coverage. So you see plays like that where everyone's accounted for and they, they're all manned up and they're all running streaks so that you pull everybody away. And then the quarterback, especially someone that's as quick as Brittle right there, you know, he's able to just get through the pocket and he can just run all the way in the end zone. But luckily that play was coming back. It is going to be a holding penalty against the offense, as I suspected. It was thrown in the backfield when the quarterback was already outside of the pocket. He was already about five yards down the field. So it will bring them back about 10 yards. So it should be a first and 20 coming up right here. Yeah, more park caught a nice break right there. It's going to be a first down and 20. Ball at the 23-yard line. Rolling out to the near sideline. Trying to find someone open. On the go route, it's going to be an incomplete pass. Intended for number eight, Deshaun Holmes. And Holmes was covered pretty nice right there. That was a good job on that secondary, locking them all up there. Nowhere to throw it there. You could see he just kind of threw it out of bounds, kind of in the vicinity, but didn't really want to risk it. So that was a good job right there by that Moore Park secondary, causing him to throw it away and bringing it to a second and 20. Exactly. Didn't want to risk it for the biscuit right there. But now coming up on a second down and 20. Moore Park Raiders looking to make a big stand. They have been making some nice defensive stands in the red zone tonight. Of course, that you may not think that with a 26 points given up but if you look back and you've been watching our coverage the Raiders have been playing great in the red zone especially on the defensive side definitely defense and offense been a great day for them wide receiver screen on the far sideline going to be brought down right around the original line of scrimmage so a pretty nice gain right there for Ethan Lazarick number 13 nice player there though by that Moore Park defense able to run and even though he didn't make tackle tackle he was able to dive and shove him out of balance right there Stopping him from even getting back to the original line of scrimmage there. Nice play by – that was a nice play right there by 
Landon Altori has a great job. Yeah, Landon Altori, number 14, a great player in the secondary for the Raiders. It's now going to set up a – it looks like a third down and 11. Third down and 11, ball. But they're placing it at the 14-yard line. Interesting on that block right there, and it looks like it's almost intercepted. Great play right there by Hayden Galvin, number 17 of the Moore Park Raiders. That was a great job right there. We saw – uh, we saw that double zig route right there, which a lot of times is how receivers will get these quick, you know, first downs, a couple yards by breaking off and coming straight across. But good job by the entire secondary. On top of that, though, if you notice, he actually went out of bounds too. So if he would have caught that ball anyway, mm -hmm. he wouldn't have been able to get that touchdown anyway since he stepped out of bounds before coming back in. A lot of receivers that, you know, when you're near the end zone, they forget about, you know, awareness of where they're out in the field. And plays like that, it was, it's a dead play as soon as he steps out of bounds and throws that ball because there's – He's already stepped out. There's no point anymore in trying to catch it. Good catch right there, Nick. He was out of bounds on that play. Going for the fourth down and 11. He has to draw back. He's on his 30-yard line trying to make something happen. Throwing on the run. He gets nailed right as he throws it, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. Great job right there by the Moore Park defense coming up with big-time plays in the backfield and right on the end zone. Great job by there by John that ball loose right when he got in his hands. A lot of times you'll see those corners, good corners and safeties will punch that ball out just so that they can't secure that catch and get the touchdown. But there does look like to be a flag here. Hopefully it's not roughing the passer because we've seen that call earlier that we all disagree with. Yes, and it looks like if they are going to call a roughing the passer, I'm going to disagree with the call again because he hit him right as he threw the football, it looked like. It looked like he was right there, and you can't tell a guy to stop his full momentum if he's already going for the tackle. He's, he, didn't, he didn't wrap him up. Actually, unnecessary roughness against the offense, so that's great. I was a little scared right there because unnecessary roughness, of course, they would call that uh, – against the defense but luckily enough it is going to be against the offense so that's going to be a turnover on downs Moore Park is going to receive the football and they should receive the football not at the 14 yard line it should be marked up about 10 yards more and great job once again Moore Park coming up stronger and stronger every single drive right there another outstanding stand an outstanding stand by that D Moore Park defense right there getting the ball back with no points given up and now that more parks now that more parks getting this momentum building let's see if this offense can come down drive and put up some more points and keep fighting to get back and take the lead in this game only 320 left in the third quarter and as you're saying more park Raiders they do have the football just down by 10 points and all the momentum is on their side nobody on the near sideline though they're all scrunched up on the far sideline on that far hash mark it's going to be a handoff Davis Cutting back to the middle, and he makes a spin move, and somehow he's able to get a gain of three. And we've been seeing time and time again problems a lot all night with it running it right up the middle. This this front three right there has been causing a lot of problems for this Cougar defense. So maybe, it, you know, they should try running outside a little bit more or passing or just staying away from that middle area because they've been – Cougar defense has been very good at stopping the run up the middle. Yes, they have been great at stopping the run up the middle. So we should go to the outside, as you mentioned. As Davis, he is going to go on the outside, but he kind of cuts it back and he's going to get the first down on the play, down just past the 40-yard line. But as you mentioned, right as you say, have an outside run, he does run it towards the outside. So great job right there by Davis. Yeah, and I think, I think the coaches are starting to realize that now that they're having a lot more success. And these guys can't keep up with our more park Raider running backs here. You know, you see them get outside, and they're almost always taking it for at least 10 yards. Once you run it in the inside here, uh, the, on the flip side, when they run it on the inside, be able to close down and stop us for short gain. There's actually a fumble on the play. Davis is able to pick it up and still <laughs> get about two yards on the play. But as you mentioned, uh, those stretch, basically those stretch routes, uh, I mean those stretch handoffs, those are the ones that's working right now. So hopefully we're able to get that. As you see, the left tackle kind of makes a nice block on the play. Definitely, definitely, yeah. You know, and it's always better too, like we are talking about, these running backs are so fast. Once they get to the outside, it's – it's, always, it's not always, but some, it's often a safer bet to run it to the outside if you have good blocking, which this Moore Park team does. A questionable call right there. I thought Desmond Davis didn't have his knee down on the ground when he picked up the football, but that's what they're calling it as. When the fumble occurred, it looked like, at least to the ref's standpoint, that Desmond Davis's knee was already on the ground when he had the football in possession. So, of course, that's going to be down. So it's going to actually be a four-yard loss. A low snap. Darling has nowhere to go with it. He actually goes right in between the linemen and the defensive 
uh, the, the lineman, uh, the offensive lineman and the defensive lineman, he goes right in between them and somehow is able to actually get back to the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage. Oh, yeah, he's so shifty. I mean, it's, he's there for one half second. You can't even touch the guy before he gets that first down. So it's, it's crazy how fast and athletic this kid is. Two back-to-back -back questionable placings because I thought he already had to the 42-yard line, but they're calling him down to 40. So it's going to be a third down and 12 with one minute left in the third quarter. Darling is going to be in the shotgun formation. Cameron's Prentice Brown and Vincent Corso, 81 and four, excuse me, 81 and 20 respectively on the far sideline. Lorenzo Berardi on the near sideline, number 19, and it looks like Darling is going to be brought down. And look at that man! It's Dorian Gerald, number 99, coming up with the sack. Yeah, Gerald's been a problem too. Not as much as some of these other guys, but definitely been a problem all night for this for this Moore Park offense. You see how quick he is. He just gets around, mm -hmm. you know, swims that one that one off. It's a tackle right there, and he's able to make a sack on. Tanner from the blind side, which he can't see, obviously. So great job right there by Gerald stopping that drive and forcing a three and out for this Moore Park offense. So now with a fourth down and about 18, obvious punting situation. You won't see a fake on this one. It's going to be a deep, booming punt, a great punt right there for the Raiders. It's going to take a little bit of a bounce. Not too much of a Raider bounce as they would like, but still down at about the 23-yard line with six seconds left in the third quarter. Still a 10-point advantage right here for the Cougars. That was a nice punt, too. You know, not pinning them, but moving them all the way down to the 20-yard line. Great punt right there. Nice 50-yard kick right there. So now it's going to be a first down and 10. Both the 23-yard line, their own 23-yard line for the College of the Canyon Cougars. COC trying to come out here and making a spark after a three and out by the Moore Park Raiders. It's going to be a fake handoff, play action pass, able to get for a first down. Great job right there from the Cougars. That was number 11, Jaron Prince coming up with the catch. And, I mean, since it's a first down, they're going to stop the clock, but it was just at point seven. They were able to put the football down. So now it will be the end of the third quarter of action. College of the Canyon Cougars winning 26-16 to against the Moore Park Raiders. And while we have another break in the action, we're going to thank a few more of our sponsors because, of course, we cannot do without you. So thank you very much for sponsoring your coverage of Moore Park Raider football on the Raider live stream. Cricket, something to smile about. Cricket Wireless. Stone Fire Grill, where community is served. Stone Fire Grill. IBEW Local 47. Southern California's lie powered for 126, excuse me, 125 years. IBEW Local 47. Latin Auto Group, family owned and operated for over 45 years. Always close to home, Latin Auto Group. The Hat, serving world famous pastrami, burgers, dogs, chili for 67 years, The Hat. Now, I don't know about you, Nick, but the hat, that's one of the best places to go. That's definitely a hot spot here in Simi Valley. The pastrami sandwiches are to die for. They have just a thick amount of pastrami. They got a pickle and mustard in there, just the perfect way to eat a pastrami sandwich at the hat. Oh, yeah, I've been going there for years. It's a great place to go eat. It's really good food, and I mean, um, you can't go wrong going to the hat. Exactly, and now the Moore Park Raiders trying to put on that victory hat if you will, trying to come back down 10. Now the fourth quarter action here at College of the Canyon. Once again, Ryan Ketchum, play-by-play -play commentator. Nick Federico, color commentator analyst. Cole Egley, the cameraman. We're here at the Cougars Stadium. Moore Park Raiders just down by 10, 26 to 16 lead for the Canyon. College of the Canyon Cougars. Pierce, he gets loose, and it looks like he has some real estate in front of him, down to the 10, and he's going to be untouched in there for the touchdown, Cougars. Pierce are their serious wheels, able to take that down for a 60-yard touchdown pass right there. Most of that all on the ground, though, just a quick, you see just a quick little pass right there, but people like that that are so fast, these receivers are just so, you know, you give them the ball and they can just do so much with such little space, so that was a great job there by Pierce. That should have definitely not gone that far. I mean, he was almost tackled right as he caught the football, but somehow he was able to burst through there. I mean, there was some pretty decent blocking upfield, but he just basically, he turned on those turbo boosters. He put on those wheels and just went towards the end zone. Here's the PAT attempt, and it's finally good. I mean, missed PAT attempt after another for the Cougars. Finally, 
able to find the middle of the goalpost. I mean, it's been a struggle for him to find that. He needed a treasure map, a treasure map just to find that one, but able to get it. Right, right, yeah. I mean, you're starting to see some success here on the flip side, which you don't, as a more park. As in the Moore Park Raiders, you don't obviously want to see that happen, of course. But the momentum, even bigger than that, is the momentum starts to switch. And when the momentum starts to switch, that's when you start to get down yourself and you start, you know, start losing it. So the Moore Park Raiders just got to be mentally focused, mentally tough. Shake that one off. There's still plenty of time left in the game. They just started the fourth quarter. You know, they just need to put points up on this, on the board on this next drive. It's very crucial. Yes, yeah, only 12 seconds taken off the clock of the fourth quarter. 14.48 to be exact on how much time they have left. Definitely enough time. I mean, that's basically a lifetime in, in any sport, especially for football. If you are passing the football, you're getting first down after first down, maybe even stepping out of bounds, just preserving the clock. They're just down 33 to 16. Definitely a score they come back from, especially how well they've been playing tonight. But... Now the Moore Park Raiders will be receiving the kick after the touchdown for College of the Canyons. Yeah, and let's see if they can just come back, which they, they should be able to. They've been doing a lot tonight and just, you know, bouncing back, scoring right back. Don't let this lead get too big here. Here comes the kick kickoff. is going to be short, recovered at the 20-yard line. Bringing it back past the 40. He has some great field position right there. A big-time return by Mark Martin, number five. Yeah, and that was a nice, that was another nice run. We've seen a lot of success here with this kickoff return team, and we also noticed too, like this leg, this, the kicker for the Cougars doesn't have as much of a leg here as, uh, as Riley Garrett, and he's not as able, he's not able to kick it as far. So that's why you see them kick it out to about the 20, 15 yard line, and then we have great runners like you know Vinnie Corso and Mark Martin who are able to turn this short kickoff into a, a decent or long kickoff return so that's why they're always ending up around the 30 to 40 yard line here on these drives it's now going to be a first down and 10 ball on their own 43 yard line it's going to be a handoff rolling out to the near sideline that's desmond davis number two able to get a pretty nice gain down at the 48 I'm telling you once they get it outside they're always able to turn you know these runs into five or six yards at least they got a good thing going here at the run game maybe start spreading out a little bit as the clock starts to kind of tick off throw a little bit more passes in here but you know do establish the run so that you can set up the pass and that is going to be a five yard gain so just with about 14 tef 10 left in the game another handoff but he's going to be brought down right there once again dorian gerald eric banks number 99 94 coming up with that tackle those are those big boys those literally the same exact height and weight the 6'3, 270 guys that are able to just stop the run sh short of the short of the goal line or short of the line of scrimmage part of me and we've seen a lot of problems here tonight with that iso run game up the middle now going to bring up a third down and six here for the moore park raiders darling drum bad to pass has nowhere to go steps up now on the near sideline just tried to make something happen puts his helmet down and gets the first down for the raiders down at the 45 inside cougar territory and we see darlin here really playing for his team and showing that he's going to leave everything on the field and hoping his teammates do the same that's the second time we've seen him use his body not sliding to get that first down so crucial to keeping his drive and this game alive yes he's definitely keeping this game alive right now for the raiders now in a first down and 10 is going to be a handoff straight to the middle, busting through. Mark Martin pushing defenders off of him left and right, getting the big-time first down. He's going to be brought down at the 31-yard line. And as we were talking about earlier, Ryan, patience is so key, and it's what makes all good running backs great. We saw Mark Martin there wait for that hole to open up for a quick second, and then he's able to hit it. And it's one of the first times now we've seen the run game work good inside in the middle, up the middle, and that was a great job right there by Martin, letting that gap open up and able to hit it for a first down. Now another first down. It's going to be a first down and 10, ball at the 31-yard line. Another handoff to Mark Martin, able to push forward for about a gain of three on the on the ground right there. Yeah, th that was a nice pickup right there. A little, a little bit under, I'd say, four yards, but he was able to get a couple yards, make something out of nothing right there. Good job by Mark Martin, moving those feet and uh, moving those chains as well. Is now going to be about a second down and seven. They're listening about second down, six and a half. Got three wide receivers spread out on the far sideline, one on the near sideline. 
Darling in the shotgun is going to be a handoff, a handoff to Mark Martin. Has some room in front of him, down the middle, able to get the first down, but it looks like it was a fumble. Wow. I thought he had the first down for sure right there. No ruling yet on the field, but it looks like that was a fumble, not down by contact. There is an injury down to the field, however. I believe that is Martin. Mark Martin, no wonder why he gave up the football. The reason why he gave up the football, of course, he never gives up the football unless he's possibly injured. It looks like they're looking at his leg. Hopefully he's okay, but Mark Martin definitely in some intense pain right now. And you hate to see that, hate, especially star players. It does, at that point, it doesn't matter, but especially when you have star players, it's even more crucial because now you're going to have to ask Davis to take more of the load. But I guess in a good case, for more Park, when you have so many other athletes, like we talked about, especially in the running back position, they can almost afford to lose a, a running back, even though they wouldn't, would rather not. It's a, they, will, they won't be hurting as bad because they have other running backs and get the job done too, but hopefully, hopefully Mark Martin's going to be all right. Yes, hopefully he's okay. He is still down on the field, however, and in some intense pain with the training crew all around him. So hopefully he's just okay. It looks like he's turning over on his side. But while we do have this injury timeout, we're going to be back in just a bit. Hopefully Mark Martin is okay when we come back with your action. There's just about 12 minutes left in the game, 33-16. to 16. The score still stands. Cougars in the lead. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. As you can see, Mark Martin is now on the cart. You saw there was a golf cart that came out. It looks like Mark Martin is in some intense pain. Hopefully he's okay. It is his foot. I mean, it is his leg, so hopefully it's not too bad of an injury. It looked like it bent backwards, but hopefully he is okay. Best wishes off to you, Mark Martin. He is getting carried, I mean, excuse me, carted off of the field, so hopefully he's just A-OK. -okay. Hopefully he'll be able to come back just as strong as ever, but – all those leg injuries, it's very devastating. Of course, it's been a lot of leg injuries in professional sports in the past few weeks with players like Gordon Hayward in the NBA. You have Jeremy Lin in the NBA. You got Brandon Marshall in NFL getting uh, ankle sprains, almost four wide receivers for the Giants getting leg injuries. So leg injuries are definitely deflating for a team as there's actually going to be a first down and 10 pass. He's going to actually carry defenders. That was R.B. Marlowe on the catch. But as I was saying, hopefully he's just okay. Leg injuries are very devastating. So hopefully he'll just be fine. And uh, this training crew over here at Moore Park College, it's one of the best in uh, in the country, I would say so myself. So he is definitely in good hands over here. Definitely, definitely. And hopefully, we know, he gets a speedy recovery and we'll see him back out here in, who knows, maybe by next week. Now on a first down and 10, he's going to pitch it forward. Yeah, we saw the shovel pass right there. That they, They've been going to that a little bit and they've had, they've had some success with it. You're starting to see him use it more as the game has progressed. But we've seen this offense starting to pick up as the game's gone on, the Cougars starting to get more and more confidence here, starting to do a lot more of these risky plays here, throwing these short short routes that can easily be jumped for pick sixes, but they've had a lot of success with it, so you can see they're going back to it a lot. Jalen Logan, number 26, was there on the reception. You saw that on the quarterback option in the first quarter as well where they just did that little shovel pass to Logan. Now on a second down and short, there's a fumble, a faulty snap. He's able to land on it. Brito, that is, able to land back on it. And you saw right there, you know, there's maybe a little bit of confusion right there with the snap count. They got very lucky right there. Moore Park would have been glad to have that ball right there. But that also does help them out because that does waste it down there for the Cougars. So with third and seven, you know, Moore Park's got a nice, nice chunk of space they can give up before getting that first down. 
Yes, now coming up, a third down and six ball at the 41-yard line, their own 41-yard line for the Cougars. Brito's in the shotgun formation, drops back to pass, looks to the near sideline, and it's almost intercepted by Hayden Galvin, a great play by the safety, unable to come up with the intercession, however, but great defense right there by the Raiders. And Hayden, I mean, this kid plays with so much intensity and passion, you know, you love to watch this kid play, always breaking up plays, making things happen. One of the true leaders on this Moore Park defense here and never, ever giving up on a game. Great job, great heads up play to force that three and out for the Cougars. And Hayden Galvin definitely is used to performing under pressure. Went to Westlake High School in the beginning of his football career on a powerhouse team that Westlake had and then transferred over to Oaks Christian to finish out his high school career. So he's definitely going up against some great talent and playing the with some great talent, and now on the Moore Park Raider team for the past two years, he has just been the key man on the secondary for the Raiders. Vinny Corzo is going to return the punt. He fumbles it. Vinny Corzo fumbled the punt and is going to be recovered by the Cougars. Wow. Number 27, that's Khaled Taylor coming up with the big-time fumble recovery. And that's something you don't see very often there. Vinny, who's always – so clutch and so so clutch when it comes to those kind of things you know it happens to it happens to all good players but let's just see if more parks defense can help out Vinny here and stop this drive from getting any more points on the board as you can see as you said all great players it always happens to all great players anybody out there can fumble it's actually going to be a personal foul against the defense declined penalty so Still great field position out here for the Cougars, but as we were mentioning, Vinny Corso, a great return man. It could happen to anybody, including him. So it basically shows that he's human and he can make mistakes because we're just so used to him not making mistakes out here for the Raiders. He's just been a great player for us, as well as Westlake High School. They're not used to him making mistakes. So great job by Vinny. Just unfortunate enough that he had to fumble the football right there. And I'm as I'm looking at his defense here, I'm not seeing Hayden in there actually either. Yeah, Hayden Galvin not in right now. It's going to be a first down and 10. About a three-yard run on the first play. Nice stop there by that defensive line right there and linebackers filling that hole before he could break it for a couple yards. And now on a second down and seven coming up here. Second down and seven. Ball is at the 13-yard line inside the red zone. Brito's in the shotgun formation, and a faulty snap once again. It looks like both teams are not having that communication, a little bit of communication problem. So now it'll be a big-time third down right here. And that's a nice get that that Moore Park defense got right there, pushing this powerful Cougar offense way back to about 28 yards, pardon me, eight yards back from the line of scrimmage right there, making it a – over 20 yards for the first down is what I meant to say, pardon me. And, you know, it's, that's really good for that Moore Park defense because they can give up a lot of space here. They can play to the sticks and not have to worry about these short third downs that always are a lot harder to stop. It's now going to be a third down and 20. Drawing back to pass is Brito. Brito has some pressure coming out of him. He takes it himself on the near sideline and just steps out of bounds right around the original line of scrimmage. So we'll set up a fourth down. Now, as you see also on the field, right by the quarterback, number 17, Hayden Galvin, back in the game. Good to see him back there. He was probably out just for one possession, maybe some rest. So he is back out on the field with about 8.30 left in the game. Right, yeah. And, you know, as a game, as we talk about the games go on, people get sore. You come out for a cramp here or there. So it is definitely good, though, to see one of the captains back on that defense back in the game. Now a fourth down and nine coming up. It looks like the offense is still out on the field. They're going to be going for it on a fourth and nine. Brito is in the shotgun. We got a three wide receiver set. We got two on the far sideline as the wide receiver core, but they are going to be calling a timeout, of course. Just a little bit of miscommunication. Couldn't get the look from the defense that they wanted to, but while we have another break in the coverage, we're going to thank a few more of our sponsors once again. In and out. Freshness you can taste. In and out. Harley's Simi Bowl presents College Cosmic Night every Thursday night from 9 p.m. to midnight. $8 with a college ID and $12 without a college ID. Only at Harley's Simi Bowl, and Harley's actually owns Camarillo Bowl and Valley Bowl. 
So all three of them do have college cosmic nights, but on Thursday night, it's at Simi Valley. So make sure you head out to Harley Simi Valley, Simi Bowl. Make sure you head out there on a Thursday night and catch that College Cosmic Night. Just a great scene over there. It's great to see all the flashing lights and the music videos while bowling. Powerade. Fuel to power through. Powerade. Nine Design. Print and interactive media. Nine Design. And Corner Bakery. Proud to support all scholar athletes at Moore Park College. Only at Corner Bakery. Now we're back to the game. We got a fourth down and nine coming up. The offense still on the field for the Cougars. It looked like that timeout, they weren't going to switch to their field goal unit. They were going for it. No matter what, they just wanted to get a better play call from the reads that they got from the defense. Yeah, it looks like they're going for the kill here. If they get this, if they can convert on this and put up a touchdown, this game is pretty much over. But if they can get, if, they, if the Moorpark defense can hold them, there's still life left in this game. Now on that fourth down, a bad snap, able to get hold by Brito. And just over the head of J.J. Dern is going to be a touchdown reception. For number eight, Deshaun Holmes coming up with the big time catch just outside of the hands of J.J. Durden. And that was great concentration right there. They do a lot of drills in football practice here. What they'll do is it's they'll, you'll have a receiver and you'll have a defender and you run. And the last second the defender will move out of the way so the receiver can catch that ball. And that's just that's great skills right there by that receiver making that touchdown catch. But hats off to the Moore Park defense there for almost tipping that ball and stopping it. And Deshaun Holmes getting his first receiving touchdown of the game right now. The PAT attempt is up, and it looks like it's good straight through the upright. So the Cougars now have a 40-16 to lead over the Moore Park Raiders here with just under eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. But now going back to the scoring drives for the Cougars, the Cougars so far on the night have two rushing touchdowns and four passing touchdowns. Brito, Andrew Brito, number 12, has four passing touchdowns on the game. A great performance by him, just electrifying for the Cougars. But, I mean, eight minutes left. It looks like it may be out of the reach for the Raiders, but never count them out. They just need one quick touchdown, and they're right back in it. So the Raiders could definitely come back in this just down 40-16. to 16. Very manageable, down by 24 right now. You know, and you're right, Ryan. You know, they get a field goal here or there, and then they just, if they can convert on some very quick drives here, there is some life left. They need they need everything to go their way with onside kicks and no turnovers and clock management. But, like you said, this is the Moore Park Raiders. You can never count them out. One thing that they do need, as you said, they need to have some quick drives. They need to have some quick plays down the field. Maybe throw in some trickery plays. I know Cameron Prentice-Brown healthy back again. Don't be too surprised if he might throw a football or Vinny Corso throw a football on a little trickery of a play with those wide receivers. Well, we've seen him do that before. Vinny Corso will receive the kick at his own three-yard line, taking it back. He has some daylight in front of him with the blocking, but he's going to be taken down right at the 28-yard line. It looked like with the blocking that they had, if there were just one or two guys that didn't get loose, he would have actually had the touchdown because it looked like with how big of a wall that Moore Park put up, he was just able to go on the outside for the touchdown. Definitely, and that wedge is so key in a kickoff return. The whole team, I mean, nothing can be done without the wedge. So that was a good job of them holding up, but if they would have just got those blocks a couple more seconds or they can work on that for the next kickoff return, you know, they can potentially put up six. Now coming out, the Moore Park Raiders offense, led by Tanner Darling, number 22. It's going to be a first down and 10 ball on their own 28-yard line. And expect to see almost all passing plays at this point. They have no time to waste here, Ryan. Now John Betts pass. A pass on the first down is going to be to Vinny Corso. There is a penalty flag. It almost looked like at first it was offsides penalty against number 99, the big boy out there, Gerald, but... The refs are going to discuss it a little bit. It looks like he stepped over the line of scrimmage a little too early. Yeah, and that's the last thing you need is you can't have any more penalties that, are, that can hurt you for the rest, especially with the time left on the clock. You've got to be playing very smart football here. It's actually going to be a chaw block against the offense. It almost looked – well, when Gerald did – Step past the line of scrimmage. There was a chop block given to him. At least it looked like it was a low block. Uh, but it didn't look like Gerald stepped offside, so that should have been an offset penalty. But unfortunately enough for the Moore Park Raiders, it will go against them, and that's the only penalty. So it's going to bring them back pretty deep inside their own red zone. Yeah, and sometimes, even though 
nobody likes to hear it. You can't leave the game up to the referees. I mean, mm-hmm. you're, there's going to be plays that you're going to wish they called the other way or one way or the other. You just got to keep playing smart football and just do as much as you can within your own control of the game and not leave it up to the referees. It's going to be a first down and 24 coming up. They got backed up 14 yards. He's just going to throw it at Desmond Davis, but he just throws it at his backside because that screen play definitely did not work. Yeah, and you saw right there, once again, Gerald coming through, blowing that up right there, almost almost causing another sack and potentially a safety, but Darling able to get out of his hand before that could happen. He's been a problem all night tonight for this Moore Park offensive line. Now coming up a second down and 24 once again after that big-time penalty. They're going to have to possibly take a shot down here deep down the field. Not too many shots taken for the Raiders tonight or throughout the season. It's going to be a wide receiver screen to Vinny Corso. Vincent Corso is going to be brought down for about a six-yard gain on the play, brought down to the 20-yard line. Yeah, and we're coming up on third down here with about just under seven minutes left. They got to be – they're going to – they need to start calling some deep pass plays here, some posts, some post corners, streaks, anything just to get this ball moving down the field and into scoring position very quickly. It's going to be a third down and 18 coming up here for the Moore Park Raiders, a four wide receiver set, two in the slot, balance on both sidelines, drawing back to pass. He is going to throw it deep down the field. Darling could not find Vinny Corso. It looked like it was overthrown by about five yards, and Corso, he was just unable to get underneath the football, so it will be an incomplete pass, setting up a fourth and 18. Yeah, and we see the punting team coming out here. I mean, as weird as it sounds, I don't know why when there's such little time left in the game. At this point, I just think that they should just try and do whatever they can to get that first down here and keep this drive alive. But maybe they, maybe they trust the defense a little bit more and hope that they can get a quick stop right there and get the ball back to the offense quickly. As you can see, the... Cougars aren't really lined up in any punt. Uh, as you can see, they are going to be going for it. They're going to go for the fake, the trickery, and it looked like the Cougars knew that was going to happen. They weren't in any like punt block formation. They weren't in a punt receiving formation. Usually you'll see the whole entire D line is lined up with a bunch of guys and only one or two guys back, so they definitely knew the fake was coming, and the Raiders almost even got there. They got about a good 15-yard gain on the play, but unable to get the first down. And I think given the circumstances here, the Cougar defense was able to expect this one because of how little time left is and the score that it is. They were able to predict this play that just happened right now, and they were able to prepare for it a lot better than last time when the Moore Park specialties caught them off sides. Now a first down and 10 coming up for the Cougars. Trying to seal the deal with this drive. It's going to be a pass, a pass to number 83 with the reception. One of the wide receivers that we have not seen tonight, Jamin Serrano. Yeah, and it looks as if they've put in all their their backups here. We're seeing a lot of new faces, some other kids getting a chance to get in the game here. But Moore Park's starting defense still out here, and when you're playing against number twos versus number ones, you know, a lot can can go the right way for the Moore Park defense. So maybe they're able to catch one of these younger guys not executing their route or dropping the ball, and they're able to make something out of it. Darren Blackshear, number 16, he actually had a rushing touchdown in the game. He's actually now back in the quarterback position, but the Raiders are able to come up with a big-time sack right there. And that's what I'm talking about here. When you bring, when you bring up these, these backup players, they're able to, they're able to not, they don't, they're not as capable of knowing what's going on here. And the starting defense for Moore Park here is very powerful and still aware, is able to capitalize on these young these young kids' mistakes. And the linebacker, Daniel Harris Henderson, able to come up with that big-time sack right there. Looks like there's a penalty flag down on the field. Should be against the Cougars. It will be. It's going to be a false start penalty leading to a third down, a big-time third down. Should be a third and 13, and, yes, they're going to place it at a third down and 13. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's good for the Moore Park defense right there, putting a lot less pressure on them here to just get this fourth down and get the ball back to that offense right now, especially with the third and 13 in your second strings, and they should be able to capitalize and not let this happen. It's going to be a handoff, and the ball's on the ground. It looks like he will land on it, but a fumble right there. Number 47, as you mentioned, all of the backups in, Forrest Carter. Forrest couldn't run right there. 
And yeah, that, literally, as I was saying, that just happened. I mean, they, you're seeing fumbles here. You're seeing miscommunications with these new guys because they don't get as many reps during practice. So that's why you see more part capitalizing left and right on these guys. And the offensive linemen were trying to block for him and try to just say run for us, run, but he couldn't get anything on that play. Definitely. So now it's going to set up a fourth down, a big-time fourth down. It looks like about a fourth down and 16. So obvious punting situation. They may go for it because, of course, they're up by 24 points, nothing to lose uh, with giving up that field position since it's still going to be on the Park side of the field if they got the ball back with five minutes left. But as we say again, never count the Raiders out of it. It just needs one big electrifying punt return by Vinny Corso to turn this game around. Definitely, and just get that momentum coming back. Now here comes the punt. They go for a punt block, not giving Corso a chance to return. It takes a pretty nice bounce for the Cougars, however, and they're going to pin the Raiders within their own five-yard line. Yeah, nice punt right there. And as you said, the football is so awkwardly shaped, no one knows where it's going to bounce in. That time, the Cougars got lucky at bouncing their favor here, bouncing all the way down to the five-yard line right there. Now, the Moore Park Raiders, it looks like, at least if you've been watching our broadcast, it looks like the Raiders should be up, at least should have been up at halftime, maybe even should be a closer game right now. 40-16 to 16 definitely does not show how hard the Raiders have worked tonight. It's just been some big-time plays down the field that have basically ruined it for them. But the Raiders have been having a pretty nice game. I mean, I'm very impressed with how well they've been playing tonight. Oh, definitely. It's one of their best games, if not their best game of the season here. It's now going to be a handoff straight out the middle, trying to gain some yards. It's going to be about a three-yard gain on the rush right there for the Raiders. And like we were talking about, we've seen very little mistakes. One penalty tonight. We've seen execution on fourth downs we've seen executions on specialties on these onside kicks on these fake punts and we've seen we've seen improvement on all three sides of the ball and that's something definitely to be proud of and they can uh, work on going into Ventura next week that they can definitely take with them but there are some things they need to improve on but the the better team has definitely been more park in the fact that they haven't been sloppy and they've been more mentally focused a quick pass in the middle, almost a horse collar-like tackle. They're not going to be calling it, but a nice catch right there. Number 27, Jordan Cueva is able to come up with that, but Anthony McLean, number 28, actually had the carry on the first play of the drive. Another great running back that we have not seen used too much this season. That's actually a returning player, now setting up a third and five at the 10. Just under three and a half minutes left in the game, and it looks like more Park Raiders just using this as practice time. They have kind of accepted that this is going to be a little too much to come back from. As I'm saying that, they launch it deep down the field, and it's going to be intercepted for the Cougars. It looks like that was an interception, and they're going to come up with that one. Basically sealing the deal right there, the Cougars coming up with a big defensive play. Yeah, and you saw right there, it was just a jump ball. Who wanted it more? And that time we saw the defense just took it away. But heck of a throw right there to try and air it out and make something out of nothing. That was about a 45-yard bomb that he threw up. You definitely like to see a quarterback that just lets it loose to try to give your team a chance to get a touchdown, trying to give them a chance to get deeper in the, the defensive territory. But Khaled Taylor coming up with that play, and you heard his name before. He actually had the fumble recovery. So Khaled Taylor, a fumble recovery in the game, and now an interception. So great plays by him. Yeah, a great night for Taylor tonight. Doing everything that he needed to do to help his team get this W. Now on a first down and 10. Ball is going to be placed at the 49-yard line, the Raiders' 49-yard line. Just some practice time right now for the Cougars, just trying to get some plays down as they have all backups in. He gets some pressure, rolling out to the near sideline. The pass is incomplete. It was intended for number 83, Jamin Serrano, and that pass was not as hot as the Serrano. We saw right there Richard Gold, Goldhammer almost throwing in that late hit right there. You just got to be careful not and have any more mental mistakes or anything that can get you ejected or anything that can hurt you for the next week's game against Ventura. Huge game coming up. Yes, and make sure you show out some support at Griffith Stadium October 28th, next Saturday night. It's going to be the Citrus Cup. 
is going to be at home. The Moore Park Raiders versus the Ventura Pirates. Make sure that you show out for this game. Now a second down and 10 coming up. It's going to be a fake handoff. Quarterback is going to pass the football. Deep down the field, J.J. Durden almost came up with the interception. It's going to be an incomplete pass finally. It looked like Jeremy Lubin had that reception, but great job by the Raiders defense, able to break it up. But, I mean, J.J. Durden, he had the interception. He has to grab onto that. It's in his mitt. Yeah, it's in his, uh, yeah, it's in his mitts. Yeah. Definitely a good job by J.J. Durant, not giving up on the play. You see him almost get the interception, and then it fall back into the receiver's hands, but him still not give up on the play and pop the ball loose to, for the incompletion. Great heads-up play by J.J. Durant. Just under three minutes left off of the incomplete pass. The clock is not going to run out, of course. So now it's going to be a third down and ten. Still at the 49. It's going to be a handoff straight up the middle, unable to get too many yards on the play because the Moore Park Raiders defense just swarming right there. That's Forrest Carter once again. So he's only able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now coming up is a fourth down and ten. Obvious punting situation with just about two and a half minutes left in the game. 40 to 16, the score stands. Cougars in the lead. Vinny Corso, Vincent Corso, number 20 for the Moore Park Raiders, back around his own 10-yard line to receive this punt. This is basically the redemption time. Of course, this may be garbage time, but Vinny Corso is thinking, hey, I just fumbled it the last time. I want to get some redemption and maybe get a big-time return right now to show my coaches that I can be a great part of this punt return team. Oh, definitely. And you, know, you never want to leave a game on a bad play. He's luckily fortunate enough to get another chance to return it instead of having to go a whole week thinking about that lost fumble. So he'll be able to get that out of his head right now after this play. Looks like there is a penalty against the Raiders. Too many men on the field, as you saw, one had to walk off the field. Just a little bit of a mind lapse. Instead of counting 11, they count, uh, instead of counting 12, they counted 11 on the play. The refs counted 12, however. Here comes the punt. It's going to be deep, almost blocked. Vinny's just going to call for a fair catch. There should have been a penalty flag thrown on that one. It looked like there was a player that was right up in Vinny's grill. you got to give some space for the guy to be able to catch it. It will be an interference penalty, but luckily enough, the Raiders, Vinny Corso was able to catch that one and give the Raiders possession. Yeah, that was a good job right there, him just kidding the ball, not you know, fumbling. He got that out of his head now, so he doesn't have to worry about that fumble that he had a couple drives ago. But let's see if the Moore Park Raiders can just put up one more score on the board, something to work with right before they leave. Just under two minutes left. The Raiders trying to get a two-minute offense going, marching down the field, as you said, trying to get a score. Of course, you want to go into the rivalry game, all these games are rivalry games because it's conference play. Is Northern Western State conference play right now. Bakersfield was a conference game right here. College of the Kansas is the conference game, but the big-time conference game, that big-time rivalry is Ventura. So you always want to go into that game with some momentum behind you. If they're able to score, they have some momentum behind them off of that seven-yard run. Definitely, definitely. Now a second down coming up, a second and three. It's going to be a fake handoff quarterback keeper. Tanner Darling going to run on the outside. He's on the far sideline, has some daylight in front of him, able to get a big gain right there down at about the 33. Nice job by Darling there, keeping that option right there and turn it up for about 15 yards. There is a penalty flag, however. It looks like that the Cougars are clapping right now, so at least the intuition is saying that it's going to be against the Raiders. Hopefully it's not. Yeah, hopefully not. You want to see, you don't want to see any more costly penalties here for the Raiders. As you do not want to see them giving it up. It's originally a first down and ten off of the Tanner Darling great gain on the ground, but it looks like it might be backed up a little bit. But with such a big gain, it should still be a first down. It shouldn't be backed up into the second down range. I mean, it will be a third down. Definitely. It's going to be a personal foul against Tanner Darling of the Moore Park Raiders. Maybe just a little bit upset that it looked like he did get hit a little bit out of bounds. So, obviously, he's going to be upset, but there's a little bit of frustration. That could have also been, uh, possibly also been because of the loss so far that they're losing the game. But hopefully Tanner Darling is able to keep his mindset and just push forward and get a nice drive for the Raiders. And you see, like we've seen at Fullerton, they're pulling Tanner just to make sure he doesn't get 
her, you know, you don't want to risk anything, and they're going to put Vinny in here just to kind of run out the clock. Yep, now Vinny Corso, the wide receiver, the return man, and now the quarterback is in. It's going to be a fake handoff. Quarterback keeper Vinny Corso straight to the middle, able to get about a six-yard gain on the run. Great job by Corso. But as we mentioned, we were mentioning in the Fullerton game, Vinny Corso, when he was on his junior varsity football team, Back in the day, back in the Westlake days, he was a quarterback. So he is definitely able to play the quarterback position. He knows what he's doing out there. Of course, college level, a little different than high school level, but he definitely has some control out here. It's going to be a handoff to Eddie Mbata. Eddie Mbata able to get back to the line of scrimmage on the play. Yeah, good job by Bata right there, kind of turning outside, getting him maybe a yard or two here, but definitely not taking a loss. Now it's going to come up with a third down, about a third down and four on the play, a third down and four ball at the 25-yard line. The Raiders still trying to get something going. I mean, only 25 seconds, less a court, seconds left. Of course, the game is over, but you still want to see them make a drive down the field. Vinny Corso rolls out to the near sideline and just throws it out of bounds. It looks like a little miscommunication. It looked like one of the receivers, he wanted William Boucher, Kyle Peterson to run a go route, but... They were not running the route, so Vinny Corso just had to throw it out of bounds with a fourth down play coming up. Right, right. You just see him not trying to risk anything or, you know, cause any more turnover. Smart thing to do right there is just throw that ball out of bounds. Now with the fourth down and four, ball still at the 25-yard line. Vincent Corso, Vinny Corso, number 20 in the shotgun position as Anthony McLean, number 28 in the backfield to his left side on this fourth down call. 15 seconds left in the game. Cougars with a 40 to 16 point lead against the Moore Park Raiders. Vinny Corso, a pass is completed. His first pass attempt of the game and first pass completion. That's definitely something to celebrate about to Curtis Cooliard, number 33. It's going to be a first down, so the clock's going to stop for just a minor moment until the ball is placed. So it will be a first down and 10 for the Raiders. Now the clock is ticking. Hopefully they're able to get one more play. Vinny Corso's trying to call for it. The ball is snapped, a bad snap, two back-to-back -back bad snaps. It's going to be another pass completion. Now to Anthony McLean. Excuse me, it's actually going to be an incomplete pass. So Vinny Corso finishes the game with one completion and off of two attempts. So a basically a 50% completion percentage. But right. Not a bad day for coming in for the last two plays of the game, right? Definitely not a bad, not a bad day for Vinny Corso. But now with the end of the game, what's your final thoughts on this, Nick? Uh, I think this was the best game we've seen hands down by uh, this more park organization here offense you know they put up a couple points defense shut down didn't allow, allow a couple points to come up on that board and specialties i mean they got that onside kick they got that fake punt that they were able to execute on and there's a lot of good that they can use and a lot of momentum that they can build on going into next week and probably the biggest game of the year definitely it will be the biggest game of the year but Hopefully this confidence could carry over with 16 points scored against a very tough team. This team actually beat Long Beach City College, who beat the Moore Park Raiders, unfortunately, by 59 points. This team, the College of Canyon Cougars, actually beat that Long Beach City College team. So for them not to lose by 59 points is definitely a victory in itself, but actually scoring 16 is great. But thank you very much, everybody, for tuning into your coverage of Moore Park Raider football here on the Moore Park Raider live stream. The final score, College of the Canyon Cougars are going to win this game against the Moore Park Raiders, 40-16. to 16. So thank you very much for tuning into this coverage. For all of our sponsors, for Michael Grimes, the production manager that gives us all the equipment to go on these away games, thank you very much. For Vern Vegso, who organizes all of our broadcasting. For Vance Manicus, our athletic director. Also for Cole Lagley, thank you very much for coming along with us on these away games, doing the amazing camera work that you have seen this whole game. Also for Nick Federico, my color commentator analyst, my name is Ryan Ketchum, play-by-play -play commentator, and we'll see you next time here on the Moore Park Raider Livestream.